So they had very serene type of music playing, whereas St Kilda were very, very pumped up. So I'm not too sure which way it's going to go, but very interesting match. But the atmosphere is fantastic down here. Bounce in the middle and we get underway. Everett starting on the ball and wins the first hit out. It goes to Hart of the Lions, who kicks across the ground towards centre wing. Lawrence, whose father once captained the Saints, back to White. And the chip pass back to Steve Lawrence. Barry Lawrence captained uh, St Kilda and played in the grand final in 1971. Back out to Hart. Kick by Hart up towards half forward. Cripps gets back there, number 18 for St Kilda. Defensive 50. Floats the hand pass over the top. Hudgston, who came to St Kilda from Queensland. Nathan Burke. The two helmeted ones are on each other. Burt and Hart. Hart. The centering kick not too good by Burke. There's Trask and he's ridden into the ground by big Barry Hall. Nick Trask, what an inclusion. He starts in the starting 18, a teenager playing just his fifth game, and it's a final. Sirikoski, Trionides. And Rod Keogh there. Keogh picked up a couple of goals over the last two weeks, so one of the options that Stan Elves has to bring onto the ground. Ball bounced. Clark just drops it down with the right hand. Has a second go. Just a forward handball out looking for space. Bamford kicks along off the ground. Lepic a long way out from goal. Working the ball along the boundary line. And it goes over and out of bounds. Good to see Lepic up the ground too. Terry playing across the half forward flank. Bradshaw's now gone back to full forward. He's been picked up by Jamie Shanahan. Wakeland picking up Lepic. As you'd perhaps expect if you're a Melbourneian, occasional showers out here at Waverley Park are predicted this afternoon. But just at the moment, the sun trying to break through. Fletcher, one that will be doing a lot of work in the midfield for the Lions. But here go the two big men again, Everett, just holds front position. Then with a fist on out towards Hudson. Peter Burke doesn't float over the top to Jones. The Lions intercept. Fletcher, Ashcroft, tosses one up towards half forward. Shanahan charges the ball down. Can't complete it. Everett stepping through, chopping through, barging through. Can't get through three. The Lions very committed at the tackle. Lepic an opportunity. Can't get away. Shanahan out into some space. It slips. It slides towards the line. Over it goes in front of Andrew Thompson. What a year it's been for Andrew Thompson. Arguably the best first-year player in the competition. Spent time on the Footscray supplementary list and St Kilda list. Shanahan playing on the youngster Bradshaw, and Bradshaw's brought him well up the ground, which might suit the Lions. Ozzy Jones was crunched out of it. The hand pass intercepted by Jones. Now Burke close to the boundary line. No score on the board as yet. Kick by Burke inside the 50. Alistair Lynch back in defence. Takes the mark. Lynch lining up on Heatley. Kick by Lynch. Weak sun starts to break out. Clark got a fingernail to it. Everett gave the hand pass straight to the opposition. And Fletcher kicks to half forward. Mark juggled and dropped by Wakeman. Hall waited for it. It's taken by White. Scrappy opening to the qualifying final. Wakeman there again. Daryl Wakeman. Onto the chest of Danny Dickfoss. Off the ball, White was poleaxed. But he's OK. Comes to Lappin. Cousins on opposing sides today. The mark is taken by Ekermanis. He goes for goal and gets the first of the game. That's just the sort of stuff the Brisbane Lions wanted. A good kick then by Dick Foss, seeing Lappin just easing his way down from about two and a half forward. He's been picked up by Maxi Hudson Lappin, and he found himself some space. And then a good kick to Ekermanis, who found himself one out against Stephen Zilla and some good finishing there but the Lions they really have come to play their underdogs going into this game and St Kilda will have to settle early and John we noticed a change in the umpire from the uh, from the program of the game that uh, was Scotty McLaren that was out there at the opening part yeah Scotty McLaren's the emergency wheels that's right so Hart with the left foot clears the area Trask, good take from the youngster. Handball floats in front of Lawrence. The younger players combining here. An experienced player, Fletcher, intercepts or assists them. There's pressure from the Saints across half back. The line's very committed at the ball here. Bamford aggressively trying to break through. Tristan Lynch in turn. Clark 
They're just surging it forward, pushing it forward, forcing it forward. Now St Kilda through Burke, across the body, back towards half-back. Chest mark to Ashcroft, and the Lions have made a good start to this game. They have the only score on the board, a goal. Marcus Ashcroft too far out to score in windy conditions. Out in front of the goal square, Lepich after it. Taken out by Wakeman, soccer by Zilla. Ackermanis with him, and Zilla happy to see the ball over the line after Ackermanis got the first goal of the game. And one problem the Lions will have, as we see there, Lambert on the bench. He's been out of football for a long time. Obviously, they're just going to ease him back into the game today. He won't be able to play a full four quarters of football. On the bench with Nathan Chapman and Ben Robbins. Still attacking the Lions. Fletcher, centering kick. Peckett from behind. Lepich Rose. Oh, I'm not sure he had it when Burke tackled him. Peckett gets back. Bringing a ball into the danger zone in front of goal. But St Kilda are up to it with a burst of Jones. Through he goes. Left foot to half forward. Dion Scott charges it down with a volleyball spike. But only as far as Everett. Jones follows up. Beautiful handball. Inside 50. A little bit slow. But it's low. Gets the kick away. But only the one behind. Darrell White for chaser from behind, was it? Sensational work. Well, he's one of the best space eaters in the game, I think, Darrell White. He can cover the ground extremely quickly. Probably almost a free kick then to Stewie Lowe with a push in the back. But just enough to unsettle him. So Lynch, a beautiful long kick out to defensive side. Lynch across the body towards the boundary line. Ball out of bounds. Adrian Fletcher on screen. He's dropped mid-season for a couple of weeks, but has come back in fine form since then. Tim, would it suggest that Lambert's not right? If he's going to be in the 21, should he be in the starting 18? Well, I think they're just trying to protect him a little bit from the start, Drew. Obviously, he'll be on the ground later in this quarter, but they probably just want to ease him back. They know he can't play four quarters of football. Clark to Hart. Inside the 50. Ackermanis has been a problem already, but Zilla this time makes sure he's not going to the goal square. It's clever the way the Lions have actually set up because they've got Ackermanis now in the 10-metre square on his own. They've pushed Jamie Shanahan up the field. He's very comfortable at fullback, Jamie Shanahan, but he can get himself a little bit lost across half-back. Lepich going in ruck against Everett. Trask got a touch. Cripps. Brown. Away to Daniels and now Harvey. Short of half-forward. Chest mark for Nicky Winmark. He's had a tough week. His father ill in WA, and I'm sure Nicky will be looking for a big one today for Dad. Kick by Winmar is a monster. Leach gets back. Can't take the mark. Concedes it behind. Had the right idea then, Nicky Winmar. He looked up and he saw the vacant goal square. Heatley had led up the ground, taking Lynch with him. And Lynch, realising what Nicky Winmar was about to do, took off quickly. So Alistair Lynch again shows us the defensive side of the ground by going to the out of it, Stuart Lowe. Very well judged mark from behind. He's still a long way up from goal, some 70 metres. So he'll put this ball towards the top of the square, true centre-half forward. The Lions do the spoiling, but only as far as Hall. Has plenty of time to settle around. The kick's not a good one, and Dion Scott getting back. Waste no time. Short to Fletcher. He inside, Danny Dickfoss has time to be able to step away now and deliver the ball very well down to Bradshaw. Lions looking to move the ball on quickly at all times. This kick crumbles out in front of Clark. Cripps does the tackling. Clark can't get away. Trask, good control, good kick, good work. Lepic. Terrific movement then down the field wasn't it just waiting for that player to present himself all the players leading up into that space in front of themselves and good delivery of the ball all the way down so the Lions working up into the breeze in this opening quarter they have the only goal on the ball for Ackermanis they've gone for their second they've got the first two of the game a perfect start to the Brisbane Lions and really that was just a sign of effectiveness with their usage of the balls, we see Bradshaw just turning. On this occasion, I thought Clark probably did the wrong thing in actually trying to pick the ball up. He should have just tried to push the ball forward again because they did have numbers there. But good finishing here from young Trask. And Lepic, as we've seen all year, in fact, he's been one of their best goal kickers.
kicking 49. In fact, that's his 50th goal for the year. Well, the goal by Lepic was his 50th of the year. He's the sixth player in the competition to get to a half century for the season. Good start by the Lions. Two goals to nothing. Clark has done well. Jones has been prominent. Robert Harvey is a man who needs to be stopped. Beautiful pass. Everett contested the centre bounce and then went forward. Peter Everett, 65 metres out from goal. Lappin is there at the back, Heatley. It comes off hands and rushes out of bounds in the left forward pocket. Well, that's what he'll do all day, I think, Drew. Peter Everett, he's a dangerous forward when he gets down there, and it also forces Matthew Clark to go with him just to combat him for height. So it puts Clark in the defensive half and Everett in the attacking half for the Saints. Dion Scott and Lowe. Stewie Lowe towards the goal square, but chopped off by Gowers. He spirals the ball out of the defensive 50. Shanahan, he's forward of the centre, Jamie Shanahan. Oh, that was an important one. Tony Brown has it. Fives it in on the left foot to centre half forward. Heatley can't complete it. Lynch is right there with him. Ground level now. Lappin dives in on the ball. Heatley sits on top of them all. A very crucial turnover at midfield. John Northey, his ninth finals campaign. Some five times with Melbourne, three times with Richmond, and last year with the Lions. From the bounce, Lappin can't get the ball away. Eventually with a handball to Winmar. Lynch does very well. Tristan Lynch, the left foot is just high in the air. 10 metres, Lappin puts it out wide, Hart moves it on further, the Lions way and Shanahan doesn't mess with it, rolls it over the line. Tim Shades of yesterday when Western Bulldogs forced Andrew Dunkley out by having the Rowan Smith put that right forward. Just to get them away from that comfortable position we saw a moment ago, Joel Smith, the injured Joel Smith on screen. Thompson a little kick. Ozzy Jones charges hard at it. Well done Andy Gowers. He met that ball front on and saw it out of play. Just check some of your key matchups, Drew. Burke has been picked up by Ashcroft. Brown has been picked up by Fletcher. Harvey by Hart. And Ozzy Jones on the wing by Scotty Bamford. Daniels, a centering kick outside centre half forward. Ashcroft gets back to take the mark, but the whistle had gone for a free kick. It's going to Burke. John Greg, Russell? Greg Stroop felt he was held in the marking contest. Kick by Burke for Heatley. Dan Owls, very vocal, even though that went the Saints' way. They got the free kick. And now the full forward has taken the mark, and Heatley doing up his boots. He is their leading goal kicker for the year with 62. Maybe Stan was a little irate then that Nathan Burke didn't actually look out to his right where Robert Harvey had drifted down and had plenty of space in front of him. But one would hate to think what his reaction would be had that kick not actually hit its target. But then you couldn't get it to a better man than Jason Heatley just at the moment, Tim. His form coming into this game has just been absolutely sensational. Surprise pack five goals last, last week. Isn't he? I mean, and what he, he gets them on the lead, but also very capable at ground level. Very cool. Surprising that he played just three games for the West Coast Eagles. Jason Heatley, 45 metres from goal. Goal! The Saints first. Yes, when that build up, the Saints really had an option here. Nathan Burke went out to his left to a lead from Jason Heatley, who is a wonderful finisher, but he could have gone to his right also, where Robert Harvey had drifted down. This fellow on screen has been the surprise packet, as far as I'm concerned, in the St Kilda lineup. Has played this is his 18th game for the season, and he really has provided a target for them up forward. And Russell, how are they settling down at ground level, mate? Well, it just seems the Bears, the Lions have. Um are playing with a bit more finals experience and you mentioned earlier that St Kilda had 15 players that uh, hadn't played before so I think it's showing in this first couple of minutes. Ozzy Jones left foot dangerously into the forward line danger for the Lions they attack the ball though but they all go down Hall sits it up to the left foot at Everett who's wandered down he's gone bang with a big left leg it's home. Quick back 
back-to-back -back goals to the Saints. And two, one worrying sign out of all that is that Robert Harvey is limping. He was in the hands of the trainers a moment ago. He actually went back with the flight of the balls. We see him there. He's hurt his back. Took a long time to get up. Got up very gingerly. And that would be a worrying sign for the St Kilda side because he is the most important midfielder on the ground at the moment. And let's just hope that that doesn't reduce his effectiveness for the Saints this afternoon. Obviously in a lot of discomfort there. Ball back in the middle. Lions got the first two. The Saints have got the next two. Leopard's a good hand pass. Back to Hart. He's kicked the centre half forward. A chance here. Trask charges hard at it. Trips well done, but he's given it up. Out into open territory. Fletcher will watch Robert Harvey. He's not too good. Daniels with courage. The hand pass out. Taken by Sean Hart. Bradshaw virtually took it off Clark, his teammate. Pump back for the Saints. On the 50. Well done, Chris Johnson. Oh, Gowers went for a cute little kick and missed it. Lappin's over the ball. Matthew Lappin for the Saints. Now, Andy Gowers with finals experience with Hawthorne. Now, here's Robert Harvey and the injury, and it could well have been Heatley. It's like a corky, yeah. I think, on and, the buttock. And they hurt, Tim, don't they? So the ball bounced. Dion Scott doing the rug work for the Lions, but Tony Brown... Grabbing ball, spinning all in one option. Advantage is paid. Here's the left foot there from Harvey. Just offline. And you get the feeling, don't you, Terry, that the Saints have now settled. Maybe a couple of pre-game nerves coming into this match. A little bit of a nervous start, but now they are outnumbering the Lions at the fall of the ball, and that's a good sign. 15 St Kilda players playing their first final. And they now seem to be settling well. Low, the long spoil towards the line. Doesn't, yes, it now is over the line, out of bounds. The total, total experience in terms of finals for St Kilda is just a total of 16 games. Robert Harvey there played at three up until today. Low down with the left hand. We mark and get it. Clark gives to Fletcher round the neck. Rogers on, kicks with the left foot out towards the wing. Lepic in front position. Shanahan's a spoiler to the line again. Out of bounds as Craig Lambert waits to come on. Craig Lambert, a magnificent player when at full fitness, but you have to wonder, he has had surgery after a back-related calf injury and has missed the last five games. In between wing and half forward for St Kilda. Down goes Fletcher. Little toe poke gets it to the 50. Johnson, you're under pressure. Hand pass to Hall. Hall hand pass to Winmar. This is close. Goal! I reckon it's over. Well, here come the Saints after a slow start. Where the Lions are really under pressure now, as I mentioned a moment ago. St Kilda are starting to get there in numbers, and good pressure here from their forwards too. Just watch this, the pressure on the Lions to get the ball out of defence. An enormous pressure there, Hall, and both Lappin engaged in that, and then Nicky Winmar, the wonderful finisher, cleaning it up. Craig Lambert on the ground for his first run. He replaced Lawrence. So a quick exchange of sharp handballs and the Saints forward line gets their third goal. And here they come again. Pounding it down to the half forward line. Dion Scott, a long, strong spoil for the Lions to Hart. He has the running support of Johnson towards the wing. Bradshaw can't complete in front position. Wakeland, good defensive work. Daniels along the ground. It's out in the path of Thompson. Inboard has support there from Lappin. Tackling good from Hart. Ashcroft. Lambert, his first touch, a creative handball to Dion Scott. Long towards the wing. Shanahan standing strong with Lepic. Fletcher, the rover, gives it on out. Daniels for St Kilda, trying to control it. Nick Trask, over the line and out of bounds. Trask, one of two inclusions into the side. He and Lambert. Champion and McRae, the two players to go out. Injuries during the week of training. They didn't need that, did they, Terry? They did not. So, really, to play a final series here now for the Lions is a little bit of a bonus. In the end of their season, it's sort of 
pitted away with just the draw in the last month. But this is a finals game and anything can happen. Daniels kick smothered. Everett has another go. And the ball taken over the boundary line for a throw in. We mustn't forget also that the Lions are kicking against the breeze. They did well to get their first two goals on the board before the Saints had scored, as we see Nathan Chapman now preparing himself to come onto the ground. So they're probably doing a reasonable job at this stage. If they can just be two or three goals off the pace at quarter time, then they'll be kicking with that strong breeze in the second quarter. Daniels. Peckett now for the Saints. Short of full forward. Harvey waits at the back. Injured and all. Goes to ground. Off the ground by Heatley. Straight across the face of goal. Jones in the forward pocket. Dispossessed by Dick Foss. Danny's looking for the line. How deliberate was that? Yes, free kick. Correctly paid to, I think, Drew. I mean, Danny Dick Foss's only intention was to put the ball over the line. So in that case, it's certainly a free kick against him for deliberate out of bounds. It's your best friend in a circumstance like that. <laughs> well, the breeze might help this ball in, but it's nearly the proverbial impossible angle. Centering kick. Off hands to Heatley. Kick partly smothered. Bamford. There's been a lively inclusion late in the season for the Lions. His kick sits up for Harvey. He'll still keep getting the ball, injured or not. Off to Winmar. 55 metres out. Oh, good kick by Nicky Winmar. Everett. Mark Page. Mark right on the line to Peter Everett. What a great kick from Winmar. That is putting pressure on the defence, isn't it? There's no doubt a player like Nicky Winmar, when the occasion is special, he just seems to be able to lift himself to that next level, doesn't he? As soon as he gained possession of that ball, I thought that he was going to have a shot at the goal. And big Peter Everett taking the goal, the mark on the line and really receiving some attention after that, which is almost as much as a free kick as we see Robert Harvey receiving some more attention too from one of the St Kilda trainers. Everett for his second. Storming now, the Saints. 4 3 to 2 goals. Yes, and they've got a winning midfield at the moment, too. Ozzy Jones has been particularly good across the centre, already raking up six possessions. Nathan Burke's had five. And with big Peter Everett controlling when he goes forward, he's going to be a thorn in the side of the Brisbane Lions all afternoon. Three, drawing three Lions defenders on that occasion. Always a couple down on the ground. So Peter Everett playing the entire first quarter in the forward half of St Kilda, doing the ruck work at the centre bounce, and then moving into the forward line, and that is dangerous best there, right on the goal line. Marks to kick his second goal. The lines through Ashcroft and Hart, trying to send the tide. With a kick out of the space, favours Jones. Long drop punt into the forward line. Low pushing and shoving in front position. Burke to do the roving. Winmar taken high by Gow. Surely. Yes, it is. One of the class acts playing league football. Nicky Winmar. Twice best and fairest to the Saints. Here's the use of the ball. Perfect. This is a very important kick for Stewie Lowe. Kicked 46 for the season. But sometimes his confidence and his own ability leaves him. Get this one through and Stewie could be in for a heck of a day. Had a tolerant week having to front the tribunal on an attempted tripping charge but was cleared. And now has an opportunity to get the St Kilda size of fifth goal in the first quarter deliberate approach guides it down pulls it across the body ever so slightly into the one behind well he certainly has improved his goal kicking Stewie Lowe over the last four or five years mostly under the tuition of Peter Hudson who also has helped a number of other players in the competition, namely Nick Holland at Hawthorne. Alistair Lynch kicks in. Clark underneath it. Big punch by Everett. Sets up Burke. Burke kept the ball alive like Winmar did a moment ago. 
through Daniels to Hall. Goal square job. Heatley gets to the back low. Well, he was clever to get boot to ball, but Stewie Lowe's now kicked three behinds. St Kilda fans lapping up this start. Nine effective scoring shots to two. And those two goals for Brisbane were the first two. There's Stewie's attempt. And Russell. Yeah, the conditions down here, it's um, still very windy. It's probably about a three or four goal breeze to, that, to the St Kilda end, but it's very squirrely, so it's difficult to judge at ground level out in the, in the field. But if you look at the, uh, the flags, it's definitely a three to four goal breeze. So with under five minutes of play left, Peter Everett comes out of that contest holding his left shoulder. St Kilda continues to surge it forward. Lapham steps out and ends up back in trouble to Thompson. Floating handball over the top, really just hoping. Lambert, a kick. A terrible kick, but it favours Bamford now. He settles himself on the right foot. In towards Lappin, the line Lappin. It's over the top. Hudson can't quite control it now, does, but puts Harvey under a great amount of pressure. The line starting to win a couple of ball here now. Through the centre bounce area for the first time for a long time. Lambert's kick's a beauty. Bradshaw. You can see Peter Everett making his way towards the interchange bench. Heavy knock on the shoulder. There it is there, Daryl White. That could be a severe body blow. But now, Daniel Bradshaw from 45 metres out. And that is the effect of the breeze taking it across towards the left-hand side. Well, the big fella doesn't look too good there. He's either hurt his shoulder or perhaps even his collarbone in that collision. That's certainly not a scene... That will gladden the hearts of the Saints fans here this afternoon. Excellent mark taken in the pack by Stewie Lowe, who's had to go onto the ball to replace Everett. Sirikoski's come on the ground playing his 50th game. And er Everett's injury, bad not only for today, but for whatever's left in the final series for the Saints, perhaps. Lynch, no mark, play on. Heatley putting the pressure on. Lynch going to the line. Well, his intentions were clear from a long way out, but he gets away with that, and it'll be a throw-in inside the 50, St Kilda into attack. True already, they've lost Lazar Vidovic for the whole season, so it could be a huge body blow to the Saints if that's a serious shoulder injury. Knocked out by Sirikoski, who's now gone on the ball. Winmar, a centering kick. Easy for Lynch once Heatley went down. And I tell you what, Tim, I think now Alistair Lynch becomes a key because if he can control Heatley, the Saints' goal-scoring options suddenly start to dry up. That's right. If, Louis, if Lowe's pushed up the field, you're quite right. So Hart now on the outer side. The Lions with a surge forward. St Kilda defence have got the ball covered here. Cripps first back. Beckett's there to assist, but Cripps slips. And the ball goes to the Lions. A free kick deliberately. Cripps under pressure when he slipped. Russell Peter Everett. Yeah, look, the doctors are still looking at it. It is his left shoulder, you're correct. Not too sure whether it's an AC joint or whether it's something internal from a bone or a joint or a muscle. So they're still looking at it, but it doesn't look too good. So with just over two minutes of play left in this first quarter, the Lions have a chance here now to pull the game right back into their keeping. Working into a three or four goal breeze, as Russell Morris called earlier. Ashcroft. 45 metres out. Drops short. There's no forward there. That is inexcusable from the Lions. Well, the players must feel the breeze in their face, so really that's made for a very clever forward just to get in front of that hole. The kick's not going to go the 40 or 50 metres that it normally would travel. Gee, the bookmakers might be uh, widening St Kilda's odds for the Premiership, seeing Peter Everett sitting down there with an injured shoulder. Here's Ackermanis. Still after it, Jason Ackermanis. Well done. Jones gets him. Big Barry Hall. Clark wrestles it away. Ackermanis again. Lippich well up the ground. A minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. And a late goal here for the Lions, which perhaps see them right in it, considering the breeze here in this game. Kick by Ackermanis. Shanahan gets back. Bradshaw keeps it in as a push. Umpire has paid a free kick here and it's coming back to the Lions to be taken by Tristan Lynch. 
Tristan Lynch will have a free kick from the forward pocket. Played against Jamie Shanahan, Drew. The ball had, in fact, gone, and Shanahan pushed, uh, pushed uh, who was it, Tristan Lynch in the back as the ball left the scene. So that's the reason for the free. Well, with a minute left of three-quarter, two-quarter time, if Lynch can thread this through, a cross breeze from that pocket, their vital score for the Lions. Very difficult shot for the youngster, even though he's close in. Well, he's kicked it well. Great goal. Just ten points the difference. Well, the context of this game, that's a very important goal. Kicked in the time on period, and that's a time of the game when coaches don't like goals scored against them. And coming out of nowhere, really a free kick. We see Lynch contesting the mark. And then Shanahan just giving him a bit of a push. And I guess that's pretty technical, but by the letter of the law, it was there. So Tristan Lynch gets Brisbane's third goal. And a crucial goal after St. Kittler kick kicked the previous four. And now have a little bit of a spring in their step to the Lions. Akamanis wins the centre bounce, a quick kick out. The defence is good for the Saints, it's Hutchinson. Feeds it off, Awakelin. Sarakoski playing his 50th game. His father, Brian, played 75 for the Saints. During the 60s to Brown. The long left foot kick, a low back at centre half forward. Spoiled by Scott's good, but here's Lappin. Back into the side this week. Good feed to Brown. Takes them all on to Brown. Runs a long way. And run too far. And by John Harvey right on the spot. And Luke, how's it looking now? Mate, a little bit of pressure as we near the end of the quarter. Yeah, we, we did well to settle after they kicked the first couple, but uh, we won't know until, I suppose, the end of the second quarter how much this wind's going to affect the game, because it does, even though it's craving our wind, it's swirling around a bit a little bit as well. Well, that's quarter time, and that last-minute goal by the Lions got them right back into it, and they trail by 10 points. Just while we're with you, Luke, did your heart sink a little bit when Peter Everett did his shoulder? Yeah, I, I didn't actually uh, see the incident, but I mean, the way he came off, I, I thought he was winded a little bit as well, but uh, he'll be a huge loss if he's no good. Hopefully uh, it's nothing too major, Drew. With Vitovic already out for a year, and Everett looking distraught, really, sitting there on the bench, and uh, just about putting the shield around him. Tim, they might get the gun out. <laughs> I don't think it's that serious, Drew, but Really, one of the reasons why the Saints have been such a difficult side to play against this year has been because of that height. They had Lazar Vidivic in the ruck. They had Everett in their forward line. The marking power they had down there with Everett, Heatley, Hall, and also Stewie Lowe. And now that's also been reduced again today as we see Wakeland, who went into the ruck late in the game. So at quarter time, St Kilda, after a slow start, lead by 10 points, 4-5-29 to 3-1-19. Start of the second quarter here. A backhander by Clark, and it goes straight to Burke. Kick by Burke, short of the 50. Gowers, good mark! <laughs> Clean pair of hands by Andy Gowers. Short out to Hart, who had a magnificent first term, Sean Hart. 11 possessions. Fletcher had 10. Kick by Hart, and here's Fletcher. Glad to get another one. Good mark by Adrian Fletcher. Right centre wing. Matty Clark had six hand passes in the first quarter for the Lions. Leading possession winner for the Saints, Burke, and also Jones. They had seven each. Here's Lappin. Matthew Lappin for St Kilda. Cousin Nigel playing for the Lions. Kick by Lappin. Low at centre wing. Used his body well on Fletcher, but then failed to take the mark. Ball knocked up by Scott. Who gained about 20 metres. And back out of bounds. Well, we're looking at Peter Everett. Here's Russell Morris with Luke Beveridge. Yes, Drew, look, pretty disappointing news for St Kilda fans, but good news for Brisbane fans. Everett's hurt his collarbone, where, where, where it joins the, um, his sternum, so he's finding it very difficult to breathe. He will not play the rest of the game. So, obviously, uh, with Everett gone, they might have to move um, Sirikoski into the ruck and maybe low into the ruck, or even um, Daryl Wakeland, but they're going to have to do some moves. So Everett's lost in the context of the game really gives the Brisbane Lions an opportunity. They're moving the ball well. Akamanis finds Fletcher. He, in turn, finds Bradshaw. Akamanis has been moved on to Aussie Jones. Scott Bamford, who started on Aussie Jones, is now in a forward pocket. 
But this fellow on screen really does play the full forward role well. He leads extremely well. His timing's precise. So just an 18-year-old. There's 32 goals for the season. He's picked up 33, and what an important goal it is for the Lions. Every now and then you see a player step into league ranks who just looks like he's going to be a full forward. Probably not capable of playing anywhere else at this stage of his career due to his fitness and the ability that he can't really play outside the immediate five metre area. But he really is a wonderful player, this young fellow. Has all the skills of an exciting forward and one would expect that he's going to be around for a long, long time. The Lions now within four points. Well, oh, good hit out by Clark. And it's punched straight onto the chest of Ashcroft. Long run of goal. Offline. And the mark taken just inside the field of play by Lappin. Ashcroft could have done better. Kick by Lappin to the 50. Out by Tristan Lynch. Hand pass over the top by Hudson. Not too good. Play a bit of basketball near the boundary line. Bamford couldn't use his pace. He was grabbed by Zilla. Ball goes to Johnson. Chance for Lappin to put the lines in front, but he hooked the kick. And is lucky to bring up a score. Tim, the other downside for the injury to Everett is that now, with the Lions going with the breeze, St Kilda haven't got a key big man to be dropping back across half-back in the path of the leading lines forwards. That's exactly right. And they would have been using that fellow in the hole in the forward line. It's going to make their job just that little bit more difficult. So Peckett uses Thompson, then back again, runs into a brick wall. The Lions with a chance. Bamford out onto the right foot, curls it around, whacks it into the woodwork. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen a better bump than that one applied here to Peckett. Have a look at this. Oh, that would wake up his ancestors, that one. <laughs> Steve Lawrence, magnificent bump. Youngster who had two knee reconstructions and returned to football earlier this year. Comes off the hands. Lepich is there for the Lions. Wakeman went without it. Lepich the hand pass. Ashcroft pops the ball up. Burke sees it over the line. So St Kilda under the pump at the moment. They lead by just two points. And Luke Beveridge has been, been joined by the Brownlow medalist Michael Voss. Afternoon, Michael. Good afternoon. How are you? Uh, you'd be pretty happy with the start of the second term. Yeah, well, I think um, the players are really uh, dug deep. You can see before the game that they are really switched on. And uh, their forward line work in terms of turning the ball over in the forward line has been really great. But, you know, it's just a concern that uh, we have to do that for four quarters and it's only uh, halfway, well, not even halfway through the second quarter yet. So we've just got to keep that up. Good on you, Michael. Look forward to uh, hearing from you during the day. Well, this, this game is really alive. First versus eighth. And uh, the last minute qualifiers into the finals, the Brisbane Lions are really taking it up to St Kilda at the moment. Just outside 50. Clark comes over the top of Sirikoski. He's got too much height. Thompson. Good body work by Ashcroft. And the ball back out of bounds. True. One thing the St Kilda side is doing at the moment is playing Lappin as a spare player in the Lions forward line. Now, I think what the Lions should be doing is actually sending someone down there and playing alongside Lappin. Sarakoski in the front position, but it's only as far as Lappin for the Lions. A long kick off, off target and just the one behind. But Nigel Lappin really generating some run now for the Lions. Craig Lambert back on interchange, had a brief run in the first quarter. Peckett again to do the kicking in, not looking at all confident at this stage. To himself again, fumbles it. Makes good the second attempt out towards Shanahan. Spoiled to the line. Nathan Burke will have to call upon all his experience here now. And it's not just good enough for the Lions to dominate general play in this quarter. They have to put goals on the board. So here's their next opportunity. Empires just sorting a few things out. Umpire Hayden Kennedy. But a boundary throwing right on the 50 for the Lions gives them an opportunity. But St Kilda hold the front position here. Burke tackling from Ashcroft is good. And it will all be done again. Marcus Ashcroft, 115th consecutive game for the Brisbane Lions. What a, what a record that is. 
Sirikoski to Clark. Fletcher working in there. Can't get it out. Keeps it there. Thompson asks the question. Umpire Hayden Kennedy decides to bounce it. Three umpires in charge. Hayden Kennedy now the one to bounce it. Sirikoski, it wasn't a high bounce. He just drops it down. Bradshaw. Hart. Little look away give. Boundary throw in. Well, down on the boundary line, Luke Beveridge. I think the talking point has got to be Everett. Can you win a flag without a Ruckman? Well, uh, I suppose you can if you can cover him properly. It'd be interesting. Uh, Lowe, played in the Ruck a bit earlier on in the year. It'd be interesting to see if he plays a bit more time there today and maybe next week. Harvey went dangerously across the half-back line. It's still here for the Lions. But Lappin can't control the ball. And out of bounds it goes. Robert Harvey's had just four touches. And another big gun in the game, Lambert, has had just three. Well, Lambert came in injured, and Harvey was injured at the 15-minute mark in the first quarter. Clean possession by Sirikoski. He did well there against Clark. Excellent mark, Darrell White, back near centre wing. Saints by a point, but the Lions putting on the pressure. Gow's kick inside the 50. Peckett got rid of Lawrence, and a free kick to Lawrence. It was well before the ball arrived, Drew Lawrence went to ground and uh, Greg Stroop obviously had a good view of it and felt that it was illegal. But it was well before the ball arrived. Well, Sirikoski's done well in the last couple of ruck contests, but is sprinting off now to be interchanged by Trionides. Different balance in the side. Lawrence for goal. He's got it. They're in front. As I mentioned a moment ago, it's not just enough to get the ball into your own forward line and to dominate play. You do have to put the six pointers on the board. And this occasion, Lawrence kicking truly after a free kick. And the Lions also rotating their full forwards. Bradshaw's having a run down there. Also, Lappin and Leppage has been going down there too. Tristan Lynch have got the last goal of the first quarter. And the Lions now have got the first two of this second quarter. So in the context of the game, three on the trot. And they really have things rolling their way. St Kilda into the breeze in the second quarter. Really struggling to get through midfield. Here's their next opportunity. Burke marking in front of Ashcroft. Needs really to keep the ball moving. They need to run it up into this forward line. Kicks back in board. Finds low. No running support for him, so he needs to go back and kick the ball. Already the St Kilda forward line is crowded up. Lions desperate to get back there. There it is, floats over the top. Brown couldn't take it. Second go on the left. Drags it back around. Just the one behind. And Terry, that was the first time they've taken the ball inside their 50-metre arc this quarter. So the Lions really have dominated play early in the second term. If they're going to get it up there, Tim, they just really need to generate more run from behind the ball, particularly the half-back line. You're quite right. They've got to move the ball quickly, don't they? Even if they just do a dummy lead, they've just got to get off and get around the man on the mark. Alistair Lynch doesn't mess around. A 60-yarder down through the centre of the ground. Hall works now with Harvey. Harvey squeezes the kick out, falls for Shanahan. Well, this would be an unlikely hero, wouldn't it? Never kicked a goal, Jamie Shanahan, and listen to the mob. And you reckon there's not one person here in the stadium at the moment that doesn't know that fact, Drew? We saw Duncan Calloway some weeks back kick his first. Jamie Shanahan is playing his 123rd game. And he has done the right thing and kept the record there for himself, but perhaps <laughs> not by his side. I and Drew, you can say it now. 123 games he's <laughs> played without kicking a goal. Well, fancy breaking a duck in a final would have been really something. But from a defender's point of view, Drew, I can tell you there is such a thing as steel elbow when you get down there. <laughs> Straight up the ground is the way to go. Low interfering and free kick to Clark. Lions lead by three points. Lepic on the run. Open goal square. Hard to imagine moving a ball quicker than that. A behind. 
Jeez, that could have hurt Jamie oh. Shanahan then because it was his man. And Jamie's chasing him from behind. Slow getting his hand on the shoulder there, Matthew Clark. And I thought that probably Lepich ran his full distance on that occasion coming through the center of the ground. Wakeland takes the mark. Daryl Wakeland. Out wide, close to the boundary line. Hutchton, a Victorian, but recruited to St Kilda from the uh, Quaffle, played in the Premiership side with West Brisbane last year. Jack Daniels midfield. Saints have had a good couple of minutes. Heatley, Lynch climbs on him. Crowd want a free kick. It's a baller. I think the crowd wanted the mark paid then, Drew, and certainly took the first grab and the second grab, but at no stage did Alistair Lynch control the footy, so a mark will see him take the first grab. As he's coming down, he gets another one, but at no stage was Alistair Lynch controlling the ball. I'm tipping with the way the fans are. They wanted the free. Brown! Offline, that breeze left to right going that way. And we've seen the miss on the right-hand side. Lions by three points. Dangerous player, Brown. He's been matched up by Fletcher and Fletcher's getting plenty of the ball but he really will have to watch Brown in those situations because he's a clever player and we've already seen him have two shots at goal in the second term. So St Kilda the three behinds in the second quarter while Brisbane have added two goals for Lynch to Lappin. Nigel Lappin uses the left foot. Hart feeds it under White. He's got space. He can run right under 50. Beautiful short pass. Bradshaw is a leading full forward option, Tim, isn't he? Around he goes on the right foot. Gone long and hard at it. One behind. And it's amazing how many players in the competition would prefer to keep moving when they get control of the ball and they're within kicking range. A lot of the players now don't like to go back for that set shot. As we see Stan Alves there fumbling with the phone. Let's just wonder whether or not he's bought some Telstra shares during the <laughs> week too because that is that subscription at at the moment, Terry, not happy with the phone. Well, St Kilda goalless into the breeze in this quarter. Remember, the Lions kicked three going that way in the first quarter. Ball's out of play. Now, down to Russell Morris. Apparently, one of the umpires is uh, not looking too good. Greg yeah, Drew, Drew, there might be an opportunity that uh, Greg Stroop may have a, a, a crook leg. So, I think the um, umpire's advisor, the umpire's trainer, is just going to have a quick look at him and see if he's OK. And Scotty McLaren on the bench, he'll just chafing at the bit to get on. Well, we'll keep an, um, uh, an eye on umpire uh, Greg's group, but here's Bamford now. Scott Bamford. Down to the forward pocket. Bradshaw almost. Johnson. Not for the first time. A bit slow to get rid of it. They wanted holding the ball. Hart's kick smothered. Ball stays in. Harvey has it. He should have given the hand pass. That is holding the ball. And whether you're up, whether you're injured or not, umpire's group, correct decision. And Robert Harvey, who had, for him, a shocker against the Lions the last time they played here in round 17, is having a below-par day again. Five possessions only, halfway through the second quarter. And this season he leads the league, averaging 30 a game. Chris Johnson into the breeze from that side of the ground. Bradshaw right in the goal square. The Saints are in disarray just at the moment. They've just lost their composure, they have. haven't they, in the yeah. last five or so minutes. And this fellow really shouldn't be able to take an uncontested mark like that. Bradshaw for his second. I know the Lions are rotating their forwards. And Lappin's getting a chance back there from the 10 metres square. Lepich has at different times as well. But I just think that Bradshaw's effectiveness as a player is really when he can operate close to goal. He got rid of Wakeland just magnificently on that occasion, just gave him a push in the side. He's only a young player, but extremely strong. And he'll kick half a dozen goals if they leave him near the 10 metre square. So Daniel Bradshaw gets his second. And Tim, I think it's nearly time to take Jamie Shanahan back to his true fullback position. He has his hands full with Justin Lepich. Robert Harvey carrying an injury. Everett on the bench. St Kilda really with a fight in front of them now. Brisbane by 10 points. Lappin out to low. The chip kick intercepted there by Dick Foss. Jones, Bamford right with him. 
Jones works towards the boundary line, wins it. Kicks back in towards Brown, fumbles the mark. Can't get back inside on the left foot. Support there for the line through White. Kicks it back outside. Lappin takes the mark. Advantage played. Away he comes. Peckett on the left foot. Tristan Lynch intercepts. Lepic well up the ground again. Very mobile, very athletic. Kicks back towards half forward. Trask. Lawrence has an opportunity. All he has to do is gather it. Steps around Lappin, slips over. Feeds it with Akamanis. Left foot. Back in, here's the one-on-one -on -one contest. Wakeland has the sit, does the spoiling out of bounds. That ball not really in Bradshaw's favoured side on that occasion. Sitting it right on top of his head as we see a very disconsolate looking Peter Everett there on screen. The dreadlocks on a dreadful day. Low the hit out. Lappin for the Lions. Some little kick to the ball. Bamford. Slips away from Jones. Well done. Slippery as an eel. A centering kick. Bradshaw in the pack. Johnson in front. Shanahan. Lapping a little hand pass to Zilla. Well, they're competing against each other, the Lions, for the ball. It comes to Brown. Keogh's on the ground for Trionides, who was tried but didn't get a touch. It comes to Winmar. Heatley well up the ground, couldn't mark. So a chance to springboard it for Alistair Lynch. Dick Voss. He was in trouble and he was looking for the line. And it'll be a throw in. Russell Morris? Yeah, Drew, just a feeling there might be a bit of panic in the St Kilda camp. A lot of things going wrong with Everett on the bench. Uh, Harvey injured. Now, Brown, we saw Mr. Mark. Things just not going well for the Saints on the field. So let's just wait and see what happens. Here's Harvey overlapping. Inside the 50. Good punch out by Dion Scott to Ashcroft. Open spaces now for Clark. Across the ground he comes to Ackermanis. Away he goes on the left foot. Takes one bounce, two bounces. He stretched them. He's going to go long towards the square. Johnson's getting back. Bounces in front of him. And another behind the Lions. They're doing their scoring by running hard through the midfield. You're quite right, Terry. That's where they've gained control in this second term, too. Ossie Jones has gone out of the game. He's had just one possession since Jason Ackermanis went up to him on the wing. And Ackermanis has been a real star for the Lions in the second term. So approaching the 20-minute mark of the second quarter, Heckett kicks just outside 50 over the top. Jones trying to keep the ball alive. Does so. Comes back inboard. Gathers it. Has a heap of Saints protecting him. To Daniels, back to Jones. He has Thompson if he wants him, decides to kick. Heatley pushes and shoves. Thompson follows up, receives the spoil from Alistair Lynch. Back in board to Jack Brown on the left foot. His kick back. Lynch, excellent work. In control at full back is Alistair Lynch. And Sean Hart playing a whale of a game. 16 possessions. Ackermanis at half back. The Lions out playing the Saints at the moment. What a boil over this would be if they win. It's outside half forward. Lawrence, who delivered one of the best hip and shoulders you've ever seen earlier on. Peckett under pressure. Lawrence got him. Zilla, short pass is good. Good vision. Robert Harvey trying to get back into the game. Oh, he gave it straight up to the opposition. It's on the 50. Well, luck's a fortune. It comes to Rod Keogh. Nobody in the goal square. Keogh. change bench Rod Keogh and the Saints back within five points well they needed that one against the flow amazing this modern football we saw about two minutes ago the Saints took the ball down the outer wing they had the numbers the ball came back across the Lions had the numbers on this side of the ground they brought it back up into their forward line a turnover at center half for the Saints again with the numbers on the opposite side of the field we see Jason Heatley in the hands of the trainers and Jason Heatley in the hands of the trainers making his way towards the interchange bench. It's taken 21 minutes for St Kilda to get their first goal in this second quarter. It was preceded by three to the Lions. St Kilda coming again, but a free kick to the Lions. And that is not a good side for St Kilda. Already had Everett off. Harvey under a question mark. Heatley now. But Winmark continues to work for the Saints. On out wide to Keogh, the goal scorer. Holds play up. 
There can't be too many options up there with Heatley coming off. It's Daniels who's floated on down. Some cooler supporters would prefer him to give it off. Tim Lau are really under pressure now. Well, they are with the injuries, but the momentum has swung back in St Kilda's favour again, hasn't it? A couple of important balls in the centre of the ground going their way. So Jason Daniels kicks towards the square, links from behind, just knocks it on down. White, Brown, left foot, squeezes one. Wrong side of the post again. That's Brown's third behind. In the second term, we go down to Russell Morris on the boundary line. Yes, Tim, look, obviously it's not really good news for Jason Hitley or St Kilda fans. His left ankle, obviously they'll have, they'll have to take the, the strapping off, maybe put ice on it, have a look at it, prod it two or three times and see how it is. But as you know, Tim, ankles can either be OK or pretty ordinary. There's no doubt about that, whether you've done the lateral side or the, the outer side. Lynch has kicked in long this quarter with the breeze. No exception. Gowers flies at the back. Harvey starting to come into it now, but the kick smothered. Matty Clark, brilliant play by the Ruckman. Trask is there. Bounces off Cripps. We watch Heatley receiving treatment. Harvey again. Out towards centre wing. Brown. It's uh, Ozzy Jones. He hand passes to get past an opponent. Great play by Ozzy Jones. Takes it up near the 50. Still going. Centering ball. It dropped in short. Nathan Chapman's there for the Lions to take the mark. Brisbane lead by four points. They've already kicked more goals than they did in the entire match when they played the Saints in round 17. They kicked five that day. There's six goals, seven at the moment, and leading by four points. Hakamanis has been a danger player in this second quarter. Probably for the first time, though, he's stopped rather than going on with the ball, but why not? Pushes it down towards Bradshaw. Fell short of that player. Three Saints get back. Cripps wins it. Switches it across to Lowe. Misses it, but well rowed by Peckett. St Kilda have a break here. If Jones can just keep it in board, he does. Kicks up towards half forward. Hall. Got it. So Barry Hall still some 80 metres out from goal as Jason Heatley being worked on by, by uh, Dr. Rowan White from St Kilda Club. Kicks in towards half forward. Lappin squeezes it. Brown, three behinds. Can he get a goal? No, not on that kick. Hard, aggressive. Winmark taken high. The trip over the ears. Umpire saw it. That's just dumb football, isn't it? Almost inexcusable at this level of football to see a player attack another player with his arms up in the air like that you've got to keep them down beside you and then when you do tackle the arms come from the hips and you get them in the right position so Winmar one goal in the first quarter an important one to give his side the lead and it's drifted away to the left hand side the eighth kick for Nicky Winmar 1-1 one, one on the scoreboard and that is not a pleasurable look on the young man's face Joel Smith with him. He's already on crutches. We might see Heatley on crutches before the end of the day. What a day for the Saints. Injuries galore. And the ball out of play. Three and a half minutes to go to half time. An interesting onlooker there. Joel Smith just to the right there of Jason Heatley. And he really is in a lot of pain, isn't he? Fortunately, Joel may have another Nintendo playing partner. Well, this isn't sudden death for the Saints. If they lose today, they'll uh, live to see another day next week. But will they be able to put a team on the field? Tristan Lynch goes round the boundary line. Peckett, almost a clever mark. But he was held and will take the free kick. True, that's what makes St Kilda getting back up and winning this so much more vital because they can win a week's rest. And Nicky Wimar really has come into the play in the last five or so minutes too. Peckett takes his free kick. Stewie Lowe. On the logo at centre wing. Slides it to Robert Harvey. Quiet in the first quarter, but coming good now. Gets the kick away just in time. Nathan Chapman takes the mark at centre half back. Lions lead by three points. Chapman towards the outer side of the ground. Past Wakeland it goes. Hudston's with him. Max Hudston in his first year in the AFL. Not much distance. Courageous mark by Ackermanis. 
He goes long. Bamford at the back. He's got pace, Scott Bamford. There's nobody within Cooey of him. He'll bring it in. 40 metres out. And he has oh. Oh, hit the post. Second poster, Scott Bamford. Gee, found some space for himself there too, didn't he? Harvey goes short with his kick to Winmar. Late in the second quarter, just under two and a half minutes to go, and the Brisbane Lions surprising St Kilda, leading by four points. Here are the Saints running it. Into the breeze. Lappin is there. Taken down by Chapman. Hall caught in a good tackle by Lynch. And the ball goes over the boundary line and we'll have a throw in. Well, it's been a terrible day for the Saints. They won the minor premiership, finishing on top of the ladder. They've had three injuries already. One to Robert Harvey in the first quarter, but he stayed out there and battling on. Peter Everett injured a collarbone in the first quarter. He's off the ground. We won't see him again today. And in the second quarter, Jason Heatley, the full forward, limped off or was carried off with an injured ankle. So they have injury problems. They have form problems. And Brisbane lead by four points, just under two minutes to go to half time. And Drew, with every injury to one of those St Kilda big men, more pressure then goes back onto the likes of Barry Hall and Stewie Lowe. Head down to the boundary line now with Russell Morris for a report. Yes, Tim, uh, Jason Heatley got kicked in the ankle. I think it was by a bit of a stop. There's a bit of blood on his ankle, so I think it's a little bit of maybe a bit of nerve damage. So good news because it's not ligament or joint damage. So he's just trying to get over this initial uh, problem of the kick. So the Lions just looking to work the ball out of defence. Clark and Ashcroft eventually to White. Gives it to Hart. Way he goes. The left foot. Kicks in towards the forward line. Bradshaw's in front. And Lowe getting back doing the ruck work in the absence of Everett to Winmar. St Kilda really have come up a cog or two in the last 10 minutes. As a player drops with injury, I think they start to realise the gravity of the situation they're in. And players starting to step up. Keo off the interchange bench. Kick the goal in the first quarter. Kick not a good one. Dick Foss. Ashcroft. Tireless runner for the Lions. Kicks towards oh, half forward. Man. Lawrence. He is a hard, nitty player. Kick not a good one. Low dropping back into that defensive. Hole takes the mark. Cripps to clear for St Kilda. Out towards Nathan Burke. Coming up for his 11th possession. Kick towards centre wing. Good use of the body by Lappin. Ozzie Jones runs hard at it and runs straight over it. Hart takes it out. Stu Lowe working well right up the ground since he's gone into the ruck. He's getting back into that hole. He's filling that space in front of Daniel Bradshaw and making it extremely difficult for him to find himself a clear lead. Jason Trionides preparing to come on for the Saints. He had a short spell earlier, didn't get a touch. And there's a kick by Hart. He is having an unbelievable day. 19 possessions to Sean Hart. And there's big Barry Hall goes to the interchange bench. Well, it's a chance to see somebody going to the bench not injured for St Kilda. I think they're just trying to exploit perhaps Alastair Lynch, who's done a wonderful job so far at full back, and probably Trianese has been instructed to take him up the field a bit, just get him out of the full back position. Bamford to Robbins. Poor old kick by Robbins, but it sits up beautifully for Bradshaw. 25 metres out, over his shoulder, on the siren. He hooked it back too far and threw for a minor score. Half time. And the team which just fell over the line to play in the finals, they qualified eighth, lead the minor premiers at half time. There's Sean Hart, who has just run himself into the deck in the first half with 19 possessions. And the Brisbane Lions lead by five points. And this would be a turn up of huge proportions if they could win. And I can tell you the viewers in Sydney watching this because if Brisbane get up today, the Sydney Swans will be eliminated. Yes, there'd be some nervous Swans fans and Swans players watching this game today with much interest. As we see this man on screen now, Jason Ackermanis, he had a terrific second quarter of football. He's running across the midfield, enabled the Lions to get plenty of penetration with the ball and also plenty of supply to their own forward lines. We see the Saints there gathering as they head towards the boundary line up the race to no doubt listen to what Stan Alves has to say at half time. But there, actually now in a situation where injuries 
are probably going to cost them some flexibility in the second half of football. Well, it just hasn't gone right today. And Father's Day for the Saints has been a day when, at the moment, they probably wish they hadn't got out of bed. Half time, the Lions 6 9 45, St Kilda 5 10. And Drew, they've reshuffled their side. Wakeman's at full forward, and Sirikowski's at centre half forward. Back in the centre, and Stuart Lowe on the ball, hacked out of the air by Harvey. Lappin gets back for the Lions, well met by Sirikowski. The hand pass back to Burke. Bit of a fumble. His hand pass then missed Winmar. Well, that wasn't good by Nathan Burke. The Lions have it. Gowers inside centre half forward. Ackermanis. Zilla lost sight of it. Down goes Trask on the 50. Bradshaw has it. The hand pass is good to Fletcher. He threads one out. Floated over by Lawrence. Lepic. And Ackermanis to an open goal. So important a goal into the breeze. Well, Ackermanis started the game at full forward. The Lions setting up completely differently when they're kicking against the wind. They've got this smaller target at full forward. And Ackermanis being picked up there by Stephen Zilla. And they're pushing their other players up the ground. So they're trying to play some marking players across centre-half forward with the players kicking into the wind and then just hopefully running the ball into goal as we saw on that occasion from Jason Ackermanis. So Jason Ackermanis, the first of the third quarter, stretching his side's lead out now to 11 points. Time becoming very important for the Saints at this centre bounce, crucial. Keo left foot into the forward line, Dick Foss in defence. Wastes no time, feeds the running Lynch. Peter Lappin, knocking up, getting possessions. That's the seventh kick for Lappin from half back. Finds Fletcher. Also a fine performer in midfield. The running players of the Brisbane Lions have been the key to their lead at this particular stage. Fletcher. Bradshaw. Still working into the breeze in this third quarter. Two kicks from goal. This one in towards Clark. Zilla attacks the ball. Lawrence comes in hard. Zilla a second time. Feeds on back out the Crips. Has support from Harvey. Another disposal, Robert Harvey. This one's perfectly weighted out towards Keo. We had rain earlier on now. Bright sunshine at Waverley. Daniels running out of room on the boundary line. He attempts to centre the ball. Failed in his attempt. It's still close to the boundary line. Well done, Trionides. Hand pass knocked down. Alistair Lynch out of defence. Swerve of the hips to get out of trouble. Dion Scott. Tristan Lynch. Brown's there for St Kilda. Winmar. Wakeland. Well, he got up there, but then couldn't take the mark. Fletcher. Well, Darrell Wakeland had everything behind that. He should have marked. Yes, he did all the hard work. He got the defenders out of the way. And it's just a matter of taking a chess mark. Perhaps Lynch's pressure there, just getting an arm in, enough to unsettle him. So St Kilda now with the opportunity by John Harvey. Bounces the ball 35 metres out from their goal. Harvey the second down towards Burke. Surges through, a quick kick out. There's space, but there's Lions. The three of them hold front position. Bamford in front of Jones, taking the ground in the tackle. That's dropping it. Good decision too, I think, Wheels. I mean, he had every opportunity to dispose of the ball and then decided against a handball and just put it on the deck. Must dispose of it by kicking it or handballing it. He will see it again, goes to ground, thinks about the handball, then thinks no. Yep, reasonable. So Austin Jones with the chance. 20 goals, 8 for the season, so accuracy really is his forte. He'll kick from right on 50, guides the ball with the assistance of the breeze. Saints have their first of the second half. That was good pressure then from St Kilda. Not allowing the Lions to move the ball out of defence comfortably. They worked extremely hard. We see Nathan Burke just getting a quick kick, just pushing the ball forward, just hoping that something can come of it up forward. And Jones just maintaining pressure there on Bamford and in the end drawing the free kick. Margin back to five points. Goal each to start this third quarter. 
Lowe goes up against Clark, and Stewie Lowe wins in the absence of Peter Everett, who's off injured. Daniels hand pass. Back to Harvey, who had just three touches to quarter time, but coming good now. Kick by Harvey out wide. Too wide. And it beats Lappin out of bounds. And a throw in. And Lappin not looking too happy. Russell Morris? Yeah, ankles are the name of the game at the moment. Nick Trask from Brisbane Lions has just left the field with a... He may have rolled his right ankle, so they're just checking that at the moment. Doesn't look as bad as a Heatley, but uh, still a bit of concern. Now it's Sirikoski playing game 50 today for the boundary throw in against Clark. Clark beats him with the extra height. And he'll have to do it again. The ball back out of bounds. And a moment ago, Drew, we saw Andy Gowers playing Robert Harvey particularly well. Harvey does like to try and send the players one way, and Gowers wasn't going to commit himself. He just played off Harvey and just made him kick the ball in the end where he wanted him to kick the ball. Fletcher can't get out of the Thompson tackle, then applies one onto Burke. And the umpire will bounce the ball. So the first week of the finals on footy's home ground, Channel 7, first playing eighth. But into the third quarter, eighth lead by five points. Brisbane Lions doing all the work. Clark in front position wins the free kick. In the absence of Everett. And earlier in the week, Lazar Vitovic, Matthew Clark, a chance to be a dominant ruckman in the ground. His kick towards the wing position. Bradshaw couldn't take it. Conceding ground back to Winmar. Steps through some heavy traffic. Kicks in beautifully to Keo. Back to Winmar. On the left foot, not a good kick. Johnson attacks it, runs it down. Handballs forward to Robbins, to Lappin. Bit of a surge through half back. One bounce, a short kick. Good to Hart. Another left footer, this time into half foot. St Kilda dropping back. Very good work there from Stewie Lowe. And Stewie Lowe's taken his seventh mark for the day. Robert Harvey takes his second for the day. And gets rid of a long hand pass to Nathan Burke. They've worked in unison for many years. Burke's kick inside centre half forward. Wakelin, oh, I think he took a dive, but the umpire's given him the free kick. I'd like to see a replay on that. I think you're right, Drew. I think he did take a dive. Alistair Lynch having a lot to say here. And I, I think he just felt Alistair Lynch behind him and uh, let his momentum keep on taking him forward and then turned around. Here we see it again. Didn't look as though there was all that much in it. Certainly made sure that Hayden Kennedy saw what happened and uh, Alistair Lynch almost telling Hayden Hey, Kennedy, a long, long story. Well, if that's a free kick, full forwards don't have to mark the ball to get it. How long would it take to call for a, a third umpire replay on the scoreboard? Wouldn't, wouldn't take long at all. Would have had a decision by now, I'd suggest. Well, we've had a couple from the commentary box wheels, so I'm yeah. sure we could have one from a third umpire or a fourth umpire. So Darrell Wakeland for his first goal. Got it! And the Saints in front. Just on that though, Wheels, I really don't know whether it's such a good idea. I mean, footy's such a quick and spontaneous game. To slow the game down by having a, another replay and another... I mean, that's just a, a stage. It certainly is a mistake, in my opinion. And uh, Alistair Lynch had every reason yeah. to complain, but nevertheless, the goal's on the board. And uh, But I think footy's such a great game that it's important that we allow the game to continue without holding it up. So St Kilda in front, free kick to Wakeland, he converts with the goal, they lead by the one point. The Lions working into the breeze, Shanahan has had Lepich right throughout the day, left foot out to Daniels. The crowd now starting to influence the game. The Saints supporters uplifting their players, Burke drives in towards Wakeland again. Dick Cross in front position, Wakeland gathers it, hands quick as it's too good for Lowe, can't get there. It's a critical opportunity gone begging on that occasion. Just watch the build up. Good hands there by Wakeland and just too much on that handball. And big Stewie Lowe, as quick as he is, not able to get his boot to it. So the Saints now by two points. Ten minutes into the third quarter. Good mark by Keo. Hits the ground running. Rob Keo breeze in his back. Yes, 
Jackson, just the St Kilda side now, just chain, gaining some momentum. But watch this kick in. And this is where sides are often vulnerable. The ball just short, falling short. Keo, good concentration. And we saw him come on in the second quarter and kick a very important goal. And he's done the game to fire the Saints up in his third term. Saints by eight points. Kicking with the breeze in the third quarter. They will need to build upon this lead if they're going to defend something in the last quarter because the Brisbane Lions are not going to lie down. This has been a tremendous contest to date. St Kilda now starting to take advantage of their hard work. Nathan Burke's been terrific in this third term too. Terry already has had five possessions after a fairly quiet second quarter. Umpire Greg Stroop restarts play just off the centre bounce. Low slaps it on out wide. Keo two goals already. Lappin tackled illegally for the Lions. Ball will come back. No advantage for the Lions on that occasion. And this is where it's difficult for the Lions to set anything up. They're kicking into a breeze. The play has stopped. So they've got to try and construct some run from nowhere here. So Nigel Lappin pushes on out wide towards Lepich. Charged through there by Tristan Lynch. Couldn't get through the traffic. Bundle over the line. Out of bounds. What a pickup he has been for the Lions. Richmond supplementary list with John Northey. Northey showing great support in the young player. He hasn't let his coach down. Low, beautifully left-handed Daniels. Quickly to half forward. Spoil from Dick Foss. Falls towards Johnson, can't get it. Thompson, one of his few touches. Keo becoming clever in it. Lappin tosses it up. Wakeland's coming, he's charging, can't get there. Defense is sound. White, chip kick. Not a good kick, doesn't clear the area. Lynch is under pressure. Ackham Manus is there to work with Bamford. Bamford plenty of toe, but so is the man chasing. Ozzy Jones, the kick by Bamford is perfect. To Andy Gowers, just outside the 50. Up to the goal square. Down goes Lawrence from Pickett. A free kick to Lawrence. Oh, he's, he's bowled over Nicky Winmar. Be very careful, son. Drew, I think Nicky Winmar milked that one a lot. I don't think there was all that much in it from Lawrence. Nicky Winmar just thought, rather than give him a free shot at goal, I'll try to pinch one there. And uh, Johnny Harvey right onto it and obviously realised that he'd milked it for all he could. Well, the Saints fans hooting and booing. They got a goal through Wakeland from a free. Now Steve Lawrence, goal. And he's given Winmar another one. Uh, Harvey just telling the boys to settle down there. No, I think Johnny Harvey's going to pay a free kick to St Kilda at the centre of the ground because that's where the ball would have started after the goal. Given that Nicky Winmar got bowled over, the free kick will be paid to St Kilda at the centre of the ground rather than the ball being bounced. John, don't you think that's over umpiring? Well, if, if the players can't be allowed to take things into their own hands, and that's to uh, a deterrent. So the ball not being bounced after that goal, a free kick being given downfield from Whitmar. Into attack go the Saints. Dion Scott across the body to Hart. So after Steve Lawrence kicked the goal for the Brisbane Lions, he chested Nicky Winmar, knocking Winmar to the ground. Free kick awarded in the centre of the ground to St Kilda. The Lions now under pressure from defence. Dick Foss's kick towards Lepich. Ashcroft. Concedes grounds to Lambert, his left foot. Gowers, Winmar from behind. Knocked down, Gowers keeps it alive, searching it forward. Grips, eyes off the ball momentarily, but wins it on the second occasion. Out to Harvey, breaking across half, halfback Robert Harvey. Out into the path of Thompson. Doesn't get to that player. Serikoski tries to keep it alive, does. Brown, left foot to Daniels. He's played on. Called that way by the umpire. The right foot deep into the pocket for Wakeland. Hard against the line. Keeps it in. Handballs back in board. Keo, he's kicked two. He's going for three. He could be the hero. Three goals to Rod Keo. Saints now kick four on the trot. Well, the critical error here was committed by Alastair Lynch. Just watch this. Wakeland should not have been able to get away in this instance. And he was free to get the handball off to Rob Keogh.
prior to this game, Rod Keogh kicked 25 goals in 73 matches. So I doubt whether he's ever kicked three in a game. Stewie Lowe, down to Harvey. This game has come to life. Out to Ozzie Jones. To full forward, Wakeman. No mark. Score by Lynch. Darrell White for the Lions. Puts it out in front of Ashcroft with Burke. Two top players here. Marcus Ashcroft. Burke goes to ground. Ashcroft keeps it in. Gowes has been pretty good in this third quarter. Lions working into the breeze. The kick has too much height for Bradshaw, allowing Hudson to take the mark. Gowers is picking up Nicky Winmar. Winmar's working well for it, but he's not picking Gowers up on the way back. Tony Brown. The Saints lead by eight points. A final that's come right to life. Keo, he's kicked three, two in this quarter. This time he can't stop it going out, and we'll have a throw in. Halfway through the third quarter, there's Jason Heatley with an injured left ankle. Peter Everett also off the ground for St Kilda with a damaged collarbone. And the Saints doing it hard against the eighth qualifier, the Brisbane Lions. Sean Hart's been great all day. His left foot kick towards Lepage, floats over the top, Stuart Lowe doing the ruck work in the absence of Everett. Kicks towards his normal position, centre half forward. But there was his first opponent today, Dion Scott. Controlling across half back. St Kilda by eight points. 16 and a half minutes into the third quarter. Dion Scott out wide, low. Can't take the mark. Harvey starting to get an influence in the game. Picks up a free kick. High tackle wheels. The umpire paid the free kick. John Harvey. It's not Uncle John, is it? No. It's going to be a baller. Robert Harvey. Three disposals in the first quarter, seven in the second, and now six in this third, starting to have an impact. Lappin steps on out, running across half back, a couple of bounces in trouble now, has to squeeze something, doesn't get it out. Low turns it back and kills his way towards Hall. White couldn't take the mark. Thompson, good feed. Here's Harvey. He's starting to show something. Lynch right on the line. Well, he sure is. He's up to 17 possessions. He had just three to quarter time. Stan Alves leading the Saints into the finals after they were bottom of the ladder after four rounds. What a comeback to finish on top. Gowers gets around Jones. Goals into the breeze have been hard to come by, but the Lions have done it better than the Saints. Ball sits up. Hudson's hand pass partly blocked. Pick it, taken to ground by Levich. Good pressure by the Lions forward line. Now, down in the crowd, Michael Voss and Luke Beveridge. Michael, under pressure now? Yeah, we certainly are. We certainly didn't end those couple of goals, that's for sure. Uh, we've got to get that momentum back now and kick another goal just to keep us in the game. If we stick with them at three-quarter time, we're a real show to take this game out. They're sharing it around. Hart, another hand pass. Gowers, a high ball. The Sun, a problem. St Kilda had the numbers. Lappin dropped it in the tackle. Bamford. Zilla was good. Oh, he hasn't got it out. He pulled it back in underneath him. Lucky to get away with it. Oh, Shanahan. Lawrence near the 50. Desperate to keep it in. What a passage of play. Drew the desperation in that. I mean, certainly did drag the ball under, but the players are so desperate that everybody was diving at the footy. Nobody actually tackled him. John Northey in charge of game number 304. He's done this a fair bit, but he would still have that nervous feeling in the pit of his stomach, I'm sure. He's watching his side work up into the breeze, knowing that they've got that breeze in the last quarter, but you can't rely upon that. Clark kicks to the one-on-one -on -one contest. Bradshaw hudged him from behind. Harvey, the support player, off the ground, clears the area. Jason Daniels, there's a whole farm out there. One bounce on the left foot. Looks for Hall, has got him. In board, Sarakoski misses the Wakeland lead, misses everything, doesn't score. Disappointing finish then. Good kick then by Jack Daniels, not noted for his field kicking, but he went to the second option. He could have gone to Sirikowski, went over the top to Barry Hall, and then that set up his St Kilda teammate for that kick, but should have done a lot more with that particular kick than what he did. Wind appears to have dropped a little bit away in the second quarter, in this uh, third term as well. Throw in in the forward pocket for the Saints. Paul got a hand to it. Thompson. 
First year player, kick smothered out of bounds and a throw in. The Lions have dropped Johnson off Rod Keogh. Now Chapman's picking up Rod Keogh and Johnson is playing against Lappin. Peter Everett with the arm in the sling and it looks as though it might be more than just the rest of this game for Peter Everett. Dick Foss takes the hand pass. Over half back he goes. Stuart Lowe now playing on the ball. Everett off the ground. Winmar inside 50. Thompson waits at the back. Might have taken a mark. Oh, overrun by Dion Scott. Thompson ran out of teammates. Scott. Well, they've lost it now. Hall with an opportunity. Intercepted the handball. He's curled it back with the breeze. Great goal, Barry. All the Lions signalling that the ball was in fact touched off the boot, but Hayden Kennedy adamant that it wasn't. He signalled the goal, and uh, that's the result. They look pretty convincing, don't they, the Lions down there? Adamant they did touch the ball. Let's just watch it closely again. The Lions had their opportunity here to get rid of the ball. That had good concentration there by Barry Hall. And just too difficult to tell from here whether or not the ball was touched. So Barry Hall with the Brisbane line defence claiming they touched the kick. But Hall has put it through for the goal and they now lead by 25, uh, by 15 points. Chapman leads in the race for the Lions, wins the ball under the pressure of the Keogh tackle. And Rod Keogh really has done some heavy work for the Saints since coming on, as has Stephen Lawrence for the Lions, number 15. The physical clashes in around the ball in this game have been quite tremendous. All players stepping in with courage. Clark and Lowe. Neither really get it away. Lambert on the ground for another run. His right arm claims so he can't handball it out. Jones wins the loose ball into Burke. Burke will come back on out wide to Harvey. He should go to Jones. He doesn't. Kicks in towards the forward line. Wakeland's nowhere to be seen. The defence led by Lynch has it. That's two handballs in a row by Lambert that have gone to the opposition. The last one, Hall said thanks and goal. And that time almost set up a goal. Well, he hasn't played a lot of football, has he, in recent times? Perhaps he's just a little bit out of touch. 72 to 57. The Lions in front. Ashcock run down and a good tackle. Keo really lifting. What a game he's played. And doesn't the crowd in this situation make a real difference, though? The Lions, when they do something good, they perform a tackle. Not a lot of support, but when St Kilda go near the ball, the player's getting an enormous lift from this strong crowd. You saw Craig Lambert there playing his first game for five weeks. It's a hot ball in there. Keogh again taken over by White for a throw in. Keogh had a good look. Russell Morris. Yes, Tim mentioned there might have been a change in the wind conditions. I think it may have um, it's swirled across. The, I think it's going across the ground now, so no, not really favouring any team, but it's still swirling a lot, but difficult though to, to judge. Clark dives over the ball, hands it to Ashcroft. Lappin. Jones. Ozzy Jones, 65 metres out from goal. So the Lions mightn't come home in the last quarter with a handy breeze. The kick by Jones. Wakeland crashes down hard. Chris Johnson's been pretty quiet. Ducks into Hall. There are safer places to go than that, son. Dick Foss. Over half back. Zilla is there with Fletcher. Zilla deliberately turned out to take the ball over the line. Five and a half minutes to go to three quarter time. And that continual pressure then from the St Kilda forwards just make it very difficult for the Lions to get the ball out of there and set play up on the way back. So Stewie Lowe. Hoping to get his 50th goal here today but shan't get it because he's been asked to do all the ruck work. Harvey just starting to weave something into the game. The amount of time this man can create is quite incredible. The kick to Hall. Right on the 50 metre line. There's two Saints down here. Which one wants it? Stewie. Are you happy for him to take it, Tim? Well, he's got well, three behinds. It could be in better hands, I think. Actually, I was looking back behind the play, and a Lions. 
player, I'm not quite sure who it was, but he crashed really heavily on that occasion with Dion Scott when they contested for the mark. Just watch this again. It's Danny Dickfoss, I believe. Dion Scott just taking him right across, and he was out before he, he hit the sleeping. ground. You find there'll be no hesitation from the medical staff here. The signal. Yep. He's out. He's got to be taken off the ground. Oh, he must for his own good. No, no, no. But, uh, now this is, I guess, this is a good decision because if the stretcher comes on and Danny gets on the stretcher, he then can't go back on the ground for 20 minutes. Just watch it again. Dion Scott collecting him across the jaw. So Stuart Low now with the opportunity. 35 metres out on the angle. Stewie's got one. Low, but a very important one as we approach three-quarter time. And hasn't he been inspirational, Stuart Lowe, since Peter Everett went off the ground? He was called up from centre half court, has gone into the ruck. As we see a very groggy Danny Dickfoss being escorted from the ground by the Brisbane Lions trainers. And Stuart Lowe, 12 kicks, four handballs, and nine marks. A fine effort. Well, Danny Dickfoss off the ground after that. Clash with a teammate, and the margin, 21 points, is the biggest in the game. Robert Harvey bursts out of the centre, and away go the Saints once more. Dion Scott punches to the front. Tristan Lynch floats the hand pass back to Alistair. No relation. He's gone straight for the white line. The reason that one not paid, Drew, is simply because Hayden Kennedy thought there may have been another intention, even though to all of us it looks as though he only had one idea in mind. <laughs> It'll give the Pope a benefit of a doubt, and uh, I won't bang Hayden Kennedy for that one. What might his other intention have been? That's what I'd like to know, John. Good question. It's a good question. Sirikoski wins in ruck. Tristan Lynch, another one for the Lions would be handy before the break. Chapman. Oh. Well, hand passes blocked. Johnson's had a poor day. Lambert gave it straight up to Shanahan. Well, Jamie Shanahan, who's been nowhere near the true full-back position all day, had a shot for goal earlier on. Kicks to full forward. Alistair Lynch works it to the front. Thompson, 30 metres out. Lux of fortune. Win mark. Well, you play in front and that's what can happen. Well, it was Nicky Winmark that actually forced the interception around the centre of the ground. Johnson just going for one too many handballs. A pretty good turnover and St Kilda on their way back. And awareness is everything in this game. Well, Nicky Winmar, this to make it a seven goals to two quarter. And the breeze is certainly not worth that much. Winmar successful. Winmar has two. And St Kilda, who started the quarter five points in arrears, are bowling away. Just watch this long kick here. And plays... Wakeland drawing two Brisbane lines. Good play there by Thompson. And look, it wasn't a terrific pass, but if you keep forcing the ball forward, no matter what the situation, something may eventuate. So Nicky Winmar with two goals. Danny Dickfoss sitting some time out here in the late in the third quarter. It's the 28-minute mark. Winmar attacking it from the outside of the square and the ball bounced once again. Russell, the win, mate, is it now going to have a real influence for the Lions coming home or do you think St Kilda have built up enough? Look, I don't think four goals are enough, Wills, but I think psychologically a team that thinks they're kicking with some form of a breeze, they firmly believe they've got a chance. So, with the, I mean, also with the Dick Foss incident, I think you've seen the vision of um, him sitting on the bench. He doesn't look too good, so I think it's only the doctor and himself that will determine whether he's able to come on. So, if he's... If he, is it all concussed? He's not allowed back on, otherwise the club's up for a big fine. So Stuart Lowe drives the ball in. Keogh from outside 50. Harvey knocks it back on, only into the path of Fletcher. His left foot kick to Gowers. He can run on, has a plenty of space, takes a bounce. Shepard from uh, Lawrence, who's good and strong. Gowers now with an opportunity into Bradshaw. She has a clever kick then by Gowers too, because he saw Stuart Lowe getting back deep into defence. As we see Stan Owls down onto the ground now, just checking their board. 
Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Bradshaw, he's unloaded one. Oh. That's a great kick into the breeze. Sensational. His third goal. That is a fair hit. This kid can kick a ball. He can mark a ball. He knows how to find the ball in the forward line as a key forward. But just clever play here. Terrific play, firstly, by Fletcher to get over to Gowers. Gowers, a smart player. He's an experienced player. He knew that Lawrence could take on Nicky Wimar, take him out of the contest. He could have banged the ball forward a long way, saw Stewie Lowe down there, just kicked the ball intelligently to Bradshaw, who finished it off nicely. Brilliant goal by Daniel Bradshaw. The 18-year-old has kicked three. He kicked three out of the Lions, five. Last time they played St Kilda here. That was a day they were absolutely flogged, but they're still in this. Keo. Just over two minutes to three-quarter time. Good tackle, and down goes Sirikoski. 21 points the margin. See, I wonder when the Lions will actually match up with Robert Harvey at those centre bounces too, because Harvey is just staying behind Stewie Lowe. He's had 11 possessions this quarter, and he really has been a dominating player. A lot of players around this ball up. White has been picking up Tony Brown most of the day, and here he is contesting in the ruck. They've lost control. Thompson! Good hand pass. Wakeland! It gets there! Darrell Wakeland gets his second. And is that enough for the Saints? Well, Wakeland finds himself in the forward line because of the injuries to the other key forwards in the St Kilda lineup in Everett and also Heatley. And he's been excellent in this third term. He's kicked two goals, but it's been his ability just to contest the marks. So the St Kilda senior players are Stuart Lowe, Robert Harvey, Nathan Burke are leading this the third quarter surge from the Saints. The Lions looking to stand their ground. They trail by 27 points at the moment. And we're at the 32-minute mark of the third quarter. In front of a very healthy attendance, 50,000 people. The majority of those St Kilda fans. Brisbane Lions haven't won here at Waverley since 1994, so they've got everything against them. But these 21 players don't know that. They're continuing on, lapping into the forward line. Hudson does the spoiling. It's right in front of the goal mouth. Winmar looking for a free. Doesn't get it. Hudson pulls it back in. Umpire comes in. He'll bounce it. Gee, Stewie Lowe went back there with some courage, didn't he? He took off from about the 50-metre line, going back with the flight of the ball, totally unconcerned about his own personal safety. And Lowe takes clean possession out of the ruck. It sits up for Pickett. I wonder who had the most courage, Stewie Lowe or the bloke who was standing in front of him. This Keo has had a magnificent third quarter. Close to the action, Stan Alves on the boundary line. Kicked by Keo. Lappin. Spent the week in a hyperbaric chamber to get himself right for this game. Off to Jack Daniels. A centering kick. Thompson. Good spoil by Fletcher. Tristan Lynch. Lappin. Alistair Lynch gets back. Wakeland giving chase. The Lions would be desperate to get one more before the siren, but they're going to run out of time. Gowers has it at half-back. No one to kick to. And there is the siren for three-quarter time. It could be a match-winning quarter for the Saints. They kicked eight goals to three in the term and converted a five-point deficit into a 27-point lead. Quarter went 33 and a half minutes. Well, the Saints were getting all the injuries early. And now the Lions getting their share with Dick Foss copping one in that quarter. And John Northy, Northy has one last rev at the Lions to see if he can get them up for this last quarter. Yes, well, St Kilda on that occasion, taking the ball inside their 50-metre arc on 17 occasions. So they had plenty of opportunities to score. And what they were doing is they were just trying to kick the ball towards Wakeland and then feeding off the crumbs. And upfield, they were getting plenty of the ball as well with Robert Harvey really coming into his own in that third term and getting plenty of the ball, especially out of the middle. St Kilda 
leading by 27 points at three quarter time 13 12 90 to Brisbane 9 9 63. Start of the final quarter here and Brisbane coming home with the breeze and they need to outscore the Saints by five goals to get up and complete this boil over. Jamie Shanahan has played well up the ground today gets it out of the centre circle. Chapman, I thought perhaps, I thought maybe Burke stole it off him. The umpire is going to ball it up. Nathan Burke, 18 possessions. A little bit down on the season average. Robert Harvey up to 21. He's certainly down on his average. Now off the ball, Lepich and Shanahan have been having a bit of a dip at each other and the whistle's gone. It's a free kick to Stuart Lowe. And he kicks deep inside 50. Daryl Wakeland taken by the chin and will get a free kick. Well, Wakeland's actually caused Alastair Lynch more problem than any other four that's been down there today. Wakeland's kicked two since half time, but he's also been contesting and drawn two or three Lions defenders every time he's gone for the ball, which has meant then that Sankura have outnumbered the Lions at the fall of the ball. So Wakeland for a rare St Kilda goal into the breeze at the left-hand end. They kicked just one in the second quarter. And that one is their only one at that end for the game. Well, down on the boundary line, we have Michael Voss and Luke Beveridge. What do you think from your respective team's point of view, Michael? Oh, well, I just think that we've got to uh, kick the next goal. It's absolutely important that we do do that. And uh, if we do, then maybe we can get a bit of a roll on like uh, St Kilda did in the third quarter. Harvey pushes on back out to Winmar. And here the experienced players don't take control for St Kilda. Burke to Shanahan. St Kilda haven't been beaten this year when they've led at three-quarter time. Brisbane haven't come back from trailing at three-quarter time. So history sits with St Kilda. They work that way. Lynch charges the ball down. A long forward handball, really. Just looking for anything that's out there. Happy to take the line. Now, Luke Beveridge is down on the boundary line with Michael Voss. Luke, what about from St Kilda's point of view? Can you feel the breeze down there? Uh, no, I think as Russell said, it's chopped off a bit, but it is swirling around. It still does favour that in Brisbane's going to, but uh, you know, it's not. I don't think it's a big advantage as it was at the start of the game. And Lady Luck not looking on the Saints. Look like uh, a hamstring injury, but Harvey comes through on the left. He's got it. So Harvey goals, and Rob Keogh grabs his left hamstring. Well, you just can't keep that number 35 out of the game. He started slowly, as Drew mentioned earlier. Got a heavy knock in that first quarter. Took a while to get himself going again. And the longer this game has gone, the more influential Robert Harvey has become. The Lions up against it now. Well, remarkably, the margin is 34 points. A few weeks ago at the Gabba, Essendon were 34 points down at this stage in the last quarter and got up to win against Brisbane. Well, can Brisbane do it themselves? Shanahan. Lapping a dive and a good mark. Saints look to be finishing stronger. They're weakened by injuries. Keogh's kicked three and with strength gets rid of Bamford and another one. Johnson couldn't get him either. Wakeland high, no mark. Thompson at ground level. Down goes Winmar. Hall taps back for Burke. Offline. Hit the post. Thompson hasn't had a lot of the ball today. He's only had 11 possessions, four kicks and 11 handballs. But, gee, he's been good at getting in front and square, hasn't he? Every time the ball's gone into the forward line, he's camped himself underneath the pack. So the Lions break from the kick in. Lynch goes wide to Clark. He's under pressure from low. And ooh, he pulled up too. Injury to insult. Matty Clark, left hamstring. 
will do this bit of ruck work and you'd expect them would head in to change bench. Chapman, the tackle from Burke was good, held the play up. Hart, the little give towards Fletcher. Kicks towards the centre of the ground. Ackermanis over the top of his head. Getting back Cripps. Body work from Bradshaw was good. Zilla. Shanahan will use Peckett. Does so. Peckett on the left foot to Burke. Burke has running support from Daniels inside. Ignores that. Looks downfield for the kick. Keogh. Daniels following on up. Zilla steps through. Everyone allows him to go. The left foot ran down by Lynch. Charges the ball. Runs out of support. Runs out of options. The boundary line's his. There's some worrying signs now for the Lions. It appears that St Kilda is still maintaining their work rate while the Lions appear to have dropped off somewhat. And Matty Park coming off. Robbins coming on. So a different balance now for the Lions. Hudged into Harvey. They're just motoring on. He started with a bit of a cough and a splutter. Needed the choke, but he's going all right now. Lappin. Inside centre half forward. Wait on! No mark. Play on. Hall goes back to Lappin. The Saints peppering away. Good kick by Lappin. difference now and Tim this win might be more meritorious than uh, otherwise would have been considering all the injuries yes it's becoming a blowout now and all the players after this particular bit of play here by Lappin getting the ball to centre half board getting back down there again and working off the pack and kicking a goal almost a mark then by Wakeley but just good follow-up football here Barry Hall getting the handball off it's been a courageous effort by the Saints this afternoon So St Kilda with six of the last eight goals of the game. The only two of this last quarter up into the breeze. Now have control of the match. Tony Brown is un in underneath that there somewhere. And Russell Matthew Clark. Yes, Terry. I'm not too sure. It might have been a bit of cramp. We're still working on his leg. Still unaware whether it's a slight hamstring tear or strain or even just cramp. So we'll just wait and see on that one because they're... They're very, very protective of their players. They've walked them up the ranks, so I can't really get close enough at this stage. So the ball bounced and virtually in the centre of the ground. Stewie Lowe gets it down, charging through his wind mark. Turned back by Chapman. Steps out into some space on the left foot into the forward line. Hudgeton bundled out of it by Bradshaw. Ackermanis the sprint. Can't get there. Peckett uses the handball into Hudgeton. Hand turn back towards Cripps. They're being held up. Steps on out to short to Shanahan, doesn't carry. Lepic is right there with him, rolls off the ball. The umpire will bounce. Now here's Matthew Clark when Stewie Lowe took him right to the boundary line and just over. And Clark was holding onto the hamstring at the back of his left leg. That looks a little bit more than cramp. Lowe. Oh, Lappin hitting the ball very hard now. The hand pass too slick for Jones. Brown to Jones. He was just over the line. Too slick work. The, the form of Lappin, sorry, Drew, the form of Lappin's been encouraging this afternoon too. Got a nasty knock at the MCG a couple of weeks ago. Missed the last home and away game. And they rushed him back into the side for this clash against the Brisbane Lions this weekend. And he really does enjoy the wide spaces of Waverley Park. Lambert trying to do the ruck work against Lowe. There's nothing in that. The Saints win it easily. Jones back in board to Lappin. Misses him. Lynch works with Bamford to try and work it out for the Lions. A good kick from Bamford finds Fletcher. Lambert on and off the interchange bench today. First game for some six weeks. The kick on out wide from the St Kilda defence. Nicky Winmart leads in the race. One of the experienced players to have hold the side in good stead here today. It has been a game for those players. The experienced mob from the Saints as Shanahan works with Cripps. To Lowe, who's been extremely good in the ruck work. To Daniels. They're in control, the Saints. Into the forward line, Serikoski. Eyes darting, looking for options. Decides to go to the one-on-one -on -one contest in the square. Wakeland from behind. Dick Foss in front. Good mark. 
Well, he can't be too concussed. He saw that one all right, Danny. Tristan Lynch in the back pocket. 13 and a half minutes to go. Cornered like a rabbit in the light. Back to the goal square. Pity it wasn't lapping. The French for uh, rabbit. It comes to Jack uh, Daniels. <laughs> I got a drink. On you. <laughs> oh, Bamford ducked his head a bit there. Darrell White's hand pass intercepted by Harvey. Stuart Lowe in the clear. Inside 50, up to 35. Wakeland. Play on. Andrew Thompson. Offline. Once again, though, Thompson just camping underneath the pack. He's been a terrific crummer for them this afternoon. Just watch this. Just getting underneath the ball here. Wakeland again drawing two. And there's the spare man. So Daryl Wakeland really has been the stand-up player here for St Kilda. Moved into the forward line when Everett went off injured. He's competed well. Bamford hit solidly there by Winmar. That turns the ball back the Saints' way. Burke out in front of Keogh. Keeps his feet in the contest. That's how you do it. White goes to ground. Keogh controls the left foot to Sarakoski. So St Kilda in their first finals appearance since 1992. Some 15 players out there playing in their first final. And really they have been well led by the senior players for the Saints. Sarakoski. He squeezed it in. 50th game and he's happy. Once again, it was St Kilda winning that critical midfield battle. Fletcher getting the kick off the ground, going to Nathan Burke, and then the space is just opening up for St Kilda. Keogh just measuring that particular ball. Intelligent play, just held up, waited for the lead to present itself. And some good finishing again. Well, the Saints running away with this now. The Lions haven't scored in this last quarter, so the breeze certainly hasn't done anything for them. Robbins. Floats one to Chapman. Long kick inside half forward. Comes off hands. Lambert a snap. Offline, you know, it was Lawrence, and through for a minor score. Well, it was the scoring end, but the Lions have only had the ball into their forward line on three occasions this quarter, really struggling to get the opportunities down there for their forwards. And the Saints starting to look like the minor premiers against the eighth team. Out wide, Cripps and Bamford. Bamford has worked extremely hard all day, held in that contest. Free kick. Kick number 11 coming up for Scotty Bamford. Not the biggest man playing AFL footy, as you can see there, but certainly one of the quickest. He's kicking to half forward. Zilla in the front, White, the long sweeping handball, flicked on again, but it doesn't reach the path of Fletcher. Daniels is back there. Oh, that's a throw, surely to Robbins. To Akamanis, Akamanis makes something of it. High tackle's been paid by Greg Scroop, so he'll ask the goal and whether it was a goal. Was. And it is. So Jason Agamanis picks up his third goal in the season best result for him. Slick, yes. Very slick handball wheels. Oh, that was a it's very a close chuck. to a crow. It is a chuck. Throw, wasn't it? Almost a forward pass. <laughs> well, Agamanis has been a fair player for the Lions today. Jason Akamanis now with three goals. Stuart Lowe, who's done the rucking since Everett went off early in the game. He wins again, but down to Fletcher. No distance with that kick. Lepich has been pretty quiet. Robbins, most of the day on the bench. To set a half forward, and Alistair Lynch moved into attack, takes the mark. He can kick long. He has a breeze at his back. It's not a gale, but it wouldn't surprise if he kicked this. 
Oh, he's tried to kick it a hundred miles, and it's gone off the side of the boot, out of bounds in the forward pocket. 41 points the difference. And Alistair Lynch did have trouble with uh, Daryl Wakeland. And he's now moved down onto the forward line for the Lions. Not much time left, 10 minutes, and they need seven goals to nothing to win. Low down, Lambert takes it, tries to get around the left foot, couldn't. Harvey, cute little push out of the path of Winmo. Winmo hit solidly there. That's Lawrence again. And he is slow to get up. Now, Wheels, there was contact to the head then, but Greg Scroop couldn't see it. But had he seen what we saw, I'm sure he would have paid a free kick. Nicky Winmo in all sorts of trouble because, as I said, there was contact to the head. So uh, if we get a chance to see it again, Nicky Winmo's head down. Contact comes in clearly above the shoulder by, by Lambert or Lawrence. And, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know, uh, John, because Nicky Winmo is actually upright. Up here he is, he's upright yeah. here. Now, whether it's a, a free or a, it's illegal to leave the ground and jump at the player like that, you'd perhaps give us some guidance on that one. No, I mean, it, as long as the player's expecting the contact, he's allowed to be bumped while the player leaves the ground. If, it's only if he doesn't expect that sort of contact that jumping from the ground constitutes a charge. Uh, in that situation where Nicky Winmar is basically pushing the ball along in front of himself, he would have been expecting contact from opposition players. So I don't think that would constitute a charge. But uh, as I said, in my opinion, there was, and we'll see it again now, I'm pretty sure there is contact above that. Oh, look, I, I, I have no doubt there's contact above the shoulder there, and uh, unfortunately the umpire didn't have as good a view of it as we have. It's uh, above the shoulder for mine. So the attrition rate very high for the St Kilda side. They look like going on to their eighth consecutive win and winning themselves a week off before the preliminary final, and they will need it. Pete Lee's off the ground with an ankle injury. Everett off with a collarbone. Nicky Winmar still in the hands of the trainers being placed on the stretcher. And Stan Elves working the game right to the end. 17 minutes into the final quarter. Just on that, Wheels, I mean, that really is a terrible feeling for an umpire when a player is down, as Nicky Winmar is, and you've called play on because you haven't had a clear enough view of what has in fact happened. And I, I'm sure that Greg Scroop would be wondering whether in fact he has missed something there. And uh, as I said, it's, it's not a very pleasant moment for an umpire to call play on and see a bloke out like that basically before he hits the turf. And uh, Greg Scroop would certainly be having second thoughts about whether in fact he has missed some sort of illegal contact. John, I don't want to put you on the spot, but would you expect an incident like that to result in Lawrence being cited? No, no, I wouldn't, simply because, as I said, it just constitutes high contact, and the only way it does constitute a charge, and that's a charge as a reportable offence, is if Nicky Winmar wasn't expecting that sort of contact. And as I said, while he's pushing the ball along in front of himself there, he knows he's in the hot spot, he knows that somebody's going to come in and meet him solidly, so he would have been expecting contact from opposition players. Had he been 10 or 15 metres off the ball and that exact same incident had happened, then yes, I think it would have constituted a reportable offence. But in the contest for the ball, as it was there, I don't think it is a report simply because he expects that contact. Well, at this rate, it looks as though St Kilda are going to need the week off next week before the preliminary final and more. The way they're supporting Nicky Winmar's head, it doesn't look very good. I think the medical staffs now draw very, very precautionary in their actions. There's Daniels, Brown, there's Lawrence who's delivered a couple of ripping shirt fronts today. Robbins, Lambert. I don't think Craig Lambert can have been 100% fit. Haven't played for five weeks. Down on the boundary line, Russell Morris, who played when the Saints were last in the finals. How about this, Russell? Well, I'm just looking at uh, Nicky Winmar, Drew, and uh, look, I'm pretty excited, obviously, from a St Gilda point of view, but he was uh, dead asleep. He probably won't remember anything about this. It just reminds me of the time when I got brushed over against the Bears about 10 years ago. I had no idea what was going on after the match, so I think Cousel uh, will find it very difficult to remember what's going on. Yes, Russell, at Corrala, I remember it well. It was Jim Edmund, by the way, flying. Not wanting to lag anyone in, Tim. <laughs> oh, no, I think everybody <laughs> saw it at the time. I, don't, I think Fly was the only one that didn't see it. I wasn't the umpire, Fly. St Kilda dominating the last quarter, and even though they're going into the breeze, they've outscored the Lions. They're finishing strongly. Here's Craig Lambert. 
Nine minutes to go. It'll be a long, long quarter with the time used up. Nicky Winmar's treatment. Alistair Lynch. Well, Jason Heatley's got his football boots back on, the socks, so uh, Tommy's even considering coming back on. Ackermanis sprays the kick right. can say now that the season's all over for the Brisbane Lions. There's not much more that John Northy can do. He's made a couple of late changes. Alistair Lynch to the forward line and St Kilda responded by taking Wakeland away from full forward and putting him down in defence. Well, Tim, when you consider the players missing from the uh, Brisbane Lions, Voss, Malloy and Keating all with knee injuries, Hughes and Chris Scott with hamstrings, Brad Broyd got absolutely nothing out of his, his season. John Northy has had to work extremely hard with what he's got. He's one of the players that have done well for him, Banford, in towards the forward line, but he too is offline. And so much was expected of him this season too, wasn't it? They were the pre-season favourites for the flag. There's no doubt that it's injuries that determine a premiership more often than not. And the sides that are there at the moment are upstanding, and here's an upstanding player, Sorokoski, in his 50th game, drives the Saints into half forward. Try and eat his. Just enough body work on Gowes to take the mark. That's probably the most difficult mark in football to take too, coming out at full pace with the ball that really wasn't a high ball. It was a fairly low trajectory ball and terrific play there. A lot of body contact there from Gowes, held him off to take the ball. And that was a sign of a very skillful player. So Trionides, back injury mid-year, but makes no mistake with that kick. He's feeling pretty good. Well, it's certainly all over now. St Kilda have been very much in control since half time. And the only worry for them now is the injuries to those key players in Heatley Everett. Whether or not they'll be able to get them up in time. And also Nicky Winmar. But in fortnight's time, he certainly will be ready to play again two weeks to work on their injuries but they are still the form side of this competition well the Saints going on with it four goals to one in the last quarter Saints win in the middle Keogh's been very good he spent a quarter on the bench back to Harvey inside half for Dick Voss well he's seeing all right Danny couple of marks in the last quarter but the Lions who reached the preliminary final last year won't go as far this year and they'll bow out in the first week of finals. Kick by Dick Foss. Through Harvey it goes. Keo again. He's almost treating them with contempt. Thrown out there. <laughs> that was contempt for the rules of the game. Free kick goes to Adrian Fletcher. 46 points the margin. Justin Lepich. Not much action from him today. Just one goal. Gets around Shanahan. Well, straight across the face of goal and out of bounds. I tell you what, you don't let eyes in front of Jamie Shanahan like that, do you? He wasn't going to let him get by. Well, he showed him the ball. In fact, I think the ball was held out that long that Jamie Shanahan was able to read every bit of print on the ball. <laughs> so Lowe continues the ruck work, pushing there. Left fist out. Lawrence picks one up. I think he screwed that one through. Good work, great goal. The 11th goal for Brisbane, but they trail still by some 40 points. Just going back to Rod Keogh, what really makes him such an important player in this St Kilda lineup is his approach at the ball. He's a very physical player and he pushes up into the play. Often we see players waiting for the ball to come to them, to their preferred positions, but Rod Keogh makes it his own just by getting up into that play. Stephen Lawrence, the son of Barry Lawrence, who played in a grand final for St Kilda. Well, young Stephen has kicked three today. Keogh, another touch. Back to Harvey. Harvey's hand pass, not great. Lambert scoops. Inside half forward. Good mark to Jason Ackermanis. He's kicked three, coming up for his fourth. Ball pretty academic now. Six and a quarter minutes remaining in the game. 40 points the margin. 
pace has proved a problem. And a good kick for four. Well, I've watched Akimanis on a lot of occasions this year just wondering why perhaps he hasn't gone on with it because I think he was one player that John Norley would have expected to be a key player this year for the Brisbane Lions. And it may appear that his best form is left right until the very end of the season. Today we've seen him get plenty of the ball. So Akimanis with four goals where his previous best this season had only been two. Low taken there by the charge from Scott. Cripps plays on out wide. Harvey, another possession. Number 28 for the game. Out wide towards the boundary line. Cripps allows it to go over. But Robert Harvey, 13 times this year, he gathered 30 or more disposals. Three times greater than 40. John, is 30 touches worth three Brownlow votes? It is during the home and away season. <laughs> so I tell you what, he's done that 13 times. Could be a few votes sitting there for him. Tristan Lynch takes the handball fed out from the boundary throwing. Kicks long to half forward. Hudson stands and does the spoil. Lynch, forward handball. Lawrence has already kicked four. Can't come back. Peckett, good experience work there. Just blocking the path. Zilla in there to assist. Zilla bowled over by Alistair Lynch. And a fine mark taken by Lappin. Nigel Lappin for the Lions. Five minutes remaining in the game. He's been overshadowed by his cousin today, hasn't he, Nigel Lappin? Just 12 possessions, which is a quiet day for him. Yeah, Matthew Lappin, 18 and four marks. Lepic disappointing. Into Chapman. Well, the Lions, I suppose they probably thought their season was over last week when they lost in Perth on the Friday night. They won a re reprieve when all the teams that could have beaten them to a spot on the eight, all then themselves were beaten. Mighty kick by Chapman, who won Sun Kick once when he was a kid. Here's a goal to Robbins. So the Lions getting some late. We'll start to get excited if they get about three more in a minute. <laughs> yes, we see this so often, don't we? As we see Lap uh, Chapman going for the big barrel here. Not the easiest one for the forwards to mark, but. Robbins just feeding off that crumb and the pressure's gone off this game now so the Brisbane Lions will finish the season in eighth position had an opportunity here against St Kilda and actually led by five points at half time but an eight goal third quarter from the Saints just blew the game apart Bamford for the Lions, drives in towards the full forward line, Hudson. Returned last week from a hamstring injury, proceeded to pick up a broken nose, courtesy of Justin Peckett, his teammate, but has played well in defence today. Sarikoski, not a good kick, Chapman takes the mark. Looking inboard, the left foot just tosses it up the centre half forward. Wakeland decides to come down to defence and do a bit now. From defence to attack, Back to defence, Jones trying to weave something, works with Lappin, takes it back again. Has space, the right foot kick out wide to Trionides, he's made it. So the three youngsters working together. Trionides into low. Well, that's not bad. Three kids and then give it to the old bloke to finish it off. Jones, he just lent it then to Lappin, didn't he? He just said, look, I'll give you one here. You won't have much else to do with it, but give it back to me. He got it back, a good kick to try and Eddie's, and this big fellow on the screen now, Stewie Lowe, has just been a terrific contributor today. Just take a look at those statistics. 18 kicks, 4 handballs, and 11 marks, and 10 hitouts. He's been very impressive, his work that he's done at the centre bounces and around the ground too. Kicked the goal in the third quarter, did Stewart. The leading mark taker in the competition. In hands that size, you would not wonder why. He's been a real leader today, though, too, Terry, hasn't he? Has. He really has stood up today. A lot of talk coming into it was that the second-tier players were made, had made the difference to St Kilda this year. 
but today in the crunch it has been the experienced players so low from 45 meters out well done Stuart a great game of footy well so St Kilda by a clear margin now and on the boundary line today we've had the Brownlow medalist Michael Voss with him Luke Beveridge thank you very much boys for joining us Michael yeah. A disappointing way to finish the season. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, all credit to St Kilda. They've played a fantastic brand of football. And uh, they'll be very hard to stop Go uh, come into the grand final, I can tell you. They're playing very good football. And Luke, uh, you're still alive. You have a chance to be in this later on? Um, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm not playing next week. Uh, it's pretty hard seconds lost today because they went out. And uh, I mean, it's going to be pretty hard to get back in the side. But I'll hang in there and see what happens. Thank you very much for joining us. Back in the middle with just under three minutes to go. Brown for St Kilda. Inside 50. Big Barry Hall. Off hands to Lappin. Another hand pass. Robert Harvey getting past 30 possessions. Out in front of Lowe. Clever. Good goal by Stewie Lowe. Well, no matter where Stuart Lowe's gone on the ground today, he's attracted the ball like a magnet. But I'd also like to know how many times Rod Keogh has received the ball after running in at the centre square at a bounce. On that occasion, it was him that got the ball out again. It was a quick handball. And that man, Robert Harvey, 29 possessions. And that was after a very quiet first quarter. Two last quarter goals to Stuart Lowe three for the game and the Saints look at a preliminary final berth Keo once again aggressive in the centre works for the ball Bamford eyes only for it Lambert out wide it falls in the favour of Tristan Lynch he's kicked towards half forward Wake on the cross half back takes the mark the defender went forward kicked two goals but more importantly provided the contest in the forward line for the Saints early in the game Burke and Cripps, Cripps just runs through the tackle from Dion Scott. Kicks to half forward, Shanahan, left hand, right hand, low tries, is still at the back. Lepich, forward, forced to be a defender, kicks out towards the wing. Bamford takes it, feeds forward, Ackermanis takes a bounce. So Jason Ackermanis has kicked four, he slips to ground in his attempt here. Alistair Lynch, most of the game at fullback. The paddle out wide will give Robert Harvey his 30th possession. Thank you very much for coming. He's at the season average now. Daniels. Poor old kick by Daniels. It spills luckily for Burke. Off the ground he goes. Gains 35 metres. Uses up some time. The Saints fans are happy. And they're still continuing to work the Saints. When the ball went into the Lions forward line, Alistair Lynch was up against four St Kilda players, so that's a good sign for Stan Owls. Even this late in the game, when the game's being won, the boys still continuing to run and support each other. Well, I remember Sean Hart being 19 possessions for half time. He is only 25. Nathan Burke goes into goal, and the co captain gets one. been a big last quarter for the two co-captains Stewie Lowe and Nathan Burke well there's some real steel about this performance there you see Nathan Burke who just continues to work extremely hard this is a fitting goal from the co-captain and as Terry Wallace said a moment ago there has been an improvement in their second tier of players but today when the game really had to be won in the second half it was Lowe it was Burke it was Winmar it was Harvey that really took control of this match 21 kicks to Nathan Burke. Only Nathan Buckley and Craig Bradley have had more kicks in the competition than he. Here they come again. Burke looks for the handball. Perhaps you are a kicker, Nathan. Gives it off in the second time to Harvey. Can't create anything there. Johnson for the lines to Lambert. He's good in close. Finds Fletcher. Fletcher was very good early for the Lions. To Lynch. Start of the game in defence. Forward only for this last quarter. Looks for Bradshaw on the lead. It's not going to reach him. Sarakoski into the side to replace Lazar Vitovic. Injured his knee last week and has been a very solid contributor. Has Sarakoski. 
the two racehorses out wide. Bamford and Jones. Jones stays upright, wins the contest, drives towards the ring. Lappin, the bounce doesn't favour him. Ashcroft towards the line. Lappin wants it in. Lappin keeps it in to Thompson. The young guns. Ball gets in the way, trying to shepherd. Again, St Kilda keep the feet. Lines go to ground. St Kilda win out. Thompson towards the top of the square. Trinidis in front. Gow's the spoil. Stewie onto the right. There's the siren. Saints in the second half have been dominant. Impressive performance today by St Kilda. Two of their star forwards off the ground. We see them on screen now. Jason Heatley to the right. Big Pitt Everett to the left. And we believe that Everett may have in fact damaged his collarbone. And that would be a real blow. Rod Keogh there. So the Count. Saints are through. They have a week off for a preliminary final. Here's Russell Morris with Stewie Love. Thanks, Drew. Stewie, first on ground. 20 days to go to the grand final. Colour Polo grand final. I hope the Saints can get there. How do you feel? What a great second half come back. Oh, fantastic flight. Just thank Christ we got a week off. Well, a lot of the boys are on the bench. Like you've got Spider with a quick shoulder. Jace with a quick uh, ankle. Mate, and you, you, know, you took it up to you. Went to the rough. How did you feel about that when Stan asked you to do that? Yeah, look, I enjoyed it. We, we talked about it throughout the week. That could be a possibility with uh, you know, laser being out. So, uh, yeah, it was just great to go up and, uh, you know, contribute and uh, do my bit. And uh, it was just fantastic. You didn't expect that to blokes to fall over and, and really have to carry the can yourself. Oh, no, of course not. Of course not. But that's footy, you know. Who knows? We just hope we can get the boys back uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Bit of a scare at half time. They led by, about, I think, about five points. Yeah, well, they played very well in the first half last week against West Coast. We, we knew they were going to really take it up to us. But, uh, you know, we just felt that we weren't playing real well, but uh, we managed to hold on, and, uh, you know, we're only five points down. So we just felt if we could just keep persevering, uh, we'd run away with it in the end. Eight wins in a row. Another week off next week will be good for you. Mate, right, wouldn't it be fantastic? Well, it's ten in a row. All you've got to do is win one more game to get into the grand final. Yeah, it look, works. look, that's right. Yeah, we just got to keep winning. We said that all year. Just uh, you know, just keep persevering and keep winning next week. And uh, look, it's just a great feeling around the place. And you know, these young fellas, you know, they, they just don't know what uh, you know, what losing's all about. They just they just run and run and run. And again today, you know, I thought we uh, were fantastic the way we just ran it out. Uh, with 20 days to go to the Coca-Cola Apple Grand Final. Good luck. Thanks, Bye. Mike. Stuart Lowe, even with a bit of a nod to the camera. The Saints advance to the preliminary final. The Brisbane Lions are eliminated. And there's one more aspect to it. The Sydney Swans, for the moment, are still alive. And now they'll start barracking for Geelong tonight in the game at the MCG. Because if North can upset Geelong tonight, all of a sudden, Sydney Swans. It's Tadar the Goose for them. That's right. So the Saints go through. 20 goals, 15, 135, to Brisbane, 13, 11, 89.